going on, everybody? Welcome to Tuesday Night Throwdown. Ladies and gentlemen, it's back on Tuesday nights. I know you feel wet down below. I hope everybody's having a good Tuesday. Had a, had a good Tuesday. I'm feeling a lot better today, I gotta tell you. I was having a mental breakdown yesterday after that Monday Night Raw. I really hope you understand what you did to me, Vince McMahon. Uh, but big news, me and Jake have been talking about Ma Matrix 4 for years. I mean, man, we're talking about five years, six years of speculating on the Matrix. And we finally, you know, got answers to the new Matrix about almost two years ago. And we did a podcast on it then. We did a speculation podcast on the Matrix uh, a few months back. And obviously we heard about the teaser trailer that was shown to everybody just a few, uh, last week rather. So pretty pumped up about that. And uh, we got a lot more. And then also the breaking news tonight. Originally I had planned to go live with a video game stream. And I was going to go live and just play some video games, hang out, and trying to take it easy after Monday Night Raw sucked the life out of me, legitimately sucked the aura out of me. I actually didn't even realize how creepy I, I came off last night. I was trying to portray that, though, to be honest. Um, but boy, can I work a crowd. I'll tell you that. Let me tell you that. Let me tell you that. Boy, can we uh, we can work a crowd here better than, we can, than WWE can. Let me tell you that. I think we had more reaction from people last night on the Raw review. I actually touched more people than the WWE Raw show itself. I was literally awake for two days straight almost last night, and I watched that Raw, and it melted my my brain. Melted my brain last night, let me tell you. Just atrocious show. This music has gone atrocious. I'm pumped up, though. I am really happy about this. So we got breaking news on Kevin Steen, Kevin Owens. This is really interesting stuff on Kevin Owens. We're going to talk about that first. I got stuff on the Matrix. I'm going to, you know, go into that. I'm going to talk. I'm going to get dorky tonight, okay? So if you guys like movies, Star Trek, the Matrix, you like Kevin Owens and a little bit of wrestling, we're going to get into all that. Plus, the Discord is open, guys. Obviously, hundreds of you are in the Discord and join the Discord. Remember, if you're a, a $10 VIP patron, please remember that you uh, should have the gold. You should have the gold VIP uh, logo thing in the Discord. All right? You know what I'm saying? Oh. There's the Discord for the people that were asking me. Oh, yeah. <coughs> this is fire tonight. So, I know that Jake DeMarco and myself have been talking about The Matrix for a long time. And, you know, we've done a couple of podcasts. I know you guys like when Jake talks about it, too. But, unfortunately, he is in the hospital. So, he's not able to be here to talk about it. So... You know, sometime at the end of the week, I think me and Jake will get down to that and we'll be able to talk about it. So, for anybody that wants to speak about Kevin Owens, Matrix 4, and other things, jump into the Discord and hop into the on hold section now and get on hold and get ready. And I'll open up the phone lines potentially in a few minutes as well. But yeah, so Kevin Owens, this is what happened. Let's go into Kevin Owens first. This is, what's up? What's up, chat? How you guys doing? How's everybody doing tonight? Sorry, I was fixing windows, my windows in my house. Like, uh, I had to fi I fixed a couple windows. There's a basically a spot in between because my windows are rotting and breaking, where water is just pouring in. And so, um, I took, I had to, f I had to, I, I did my best, man. I don't know, can't afford windows, but I could afford the silicone, baby. I silicone the hell out of those things. I siliconed them up, baby. The water better not get in, or I'm gonna be pissed. What's up, chat? So Kevin Owens potentially going to AEW. Here's what we do know. Kevin Owens tweeted out a 
and I don't know if this is what somebody sent me here. No, this is uh, news from Cyclops. I don't care about... I really don't care about Cyclops' news. But if somebody has the tweet, I think Kevin Owens might have deleted it. But somebody sent it to me earlier, and I think he deleted it, or at least somebody says he deleted it. And what happened was, apparently, he tweeted out these coordinates. Unless somebody can tell me if this is fake, this could be fake. I don't know if this is fake or real, but I know that Sh that Sean Cyclops Sap has said that Kevin Owens' contract is um is up early. So whatever that means, I don't know. They thought it was he had an extension. Apparently, there was an extension. That's what was listed. Everybody thought, of course, he's going to take the extension, and now that's not happening when they offered it. Or he didn't meet a certain criteria for the extension, which would mean that he didn't have certain amount of appearances, so they had to create an extension, something like that. And uh, apparently it's up. Now, I don't know, again, if this is real. These, these letters are very bold looking compared to everything else. I don't know if this tweet is real. Again, like I said, this could be a... I don't see any discrepancies in the coloration. So, I mean, it looks pretty authentic, but I'm not 100% sure. I didn't verify this on going back in the internet time machine or anything like that, but these coordinates apparently lead you to Mount Rushmore. This is according to a Twitter account called Fiending for Followers. <laughs> so, I mean, that could be... <laughs> this guy could be fiending for fucking making up shit. I don't know. But either way, Kevin Owens tweeted and deleted these coordinates. These are funny. I did something similar to this last night on my Corrupted Nation channel um, just to be funny. Kevin Owens tweeted and maybe Kevin Owens is just being funny, but he tweeted and deleted these coordinates. Uh, these are Mount Rushmore. And Mount Rushmore is the same name of a group Owens was in with the Young Bucks with Adam Cole in ROH. Now, could it mean that that Kevin Owens is going to ROH? That could be what's going on. But obviously a lot of people think, "Oh, he's going to AEW or this is, you know." And, and if I was him, I would do the tour thing if I could. You know, I would just do the tour around, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? It's it, it would be nice to do the tour thing. I know it's a deleted tweet. He did delete he did delete it. But I just don't think I'm not a hundred percent on what on what that is, on what's going on. I I don't see exactly the reason. There's no reason to it. It just means that it do, it it does mean it seems that he's leaving WWE. I I can't imagine he's staying. I'm done predicting that whole thing. Remember that thing where I was like, no, it's a brilliant idea by WWE to make people think they're leaving the WWE, and then they're really just staying. And uh, it's it's to make a big pop on Raw. It's like, no, that's not... Th see, they didn't do it. I, that's what I would do if I was Vince. I'd be like, create the hype you're going, and then you're really staying here, and it's a big deal. And it's, that's a real F you to people too, right? Like, you make it seem like this guy's going, and he's going to go, and then he just shows up on, a, on Raw or one of the other areas. You know, just something like that. Dude, that's hilarious. That would have been funny as fuck. But that's not what they did. I don't understand that. <clears throat> That's got to be a fake rose. Upset about the show calling. What? I understand what that means. What? The big show? Well, I don't understand that tweet. If that's even, that's probably Alien Man. Mount Rushmore coordinates. Yeah, we figured that out. Um, why is he going to be, why is he going to be with the elite? Do you mean... Who is he going to be or who is he going to be with? What, what do you mean by that? I'm not sure. He wants to get kissed by the Bucks. Yeah, he brought, Yeah, he saw Adam Cole last night get smooched. And he's like, damn, I got to get smooched too. Um, yeah, that I mean, that could that could be it. He saw the, the male love, the bonding, and he was like, yo, I got to get some of that. I got to get some of that male bonding. Dude, I know a guy the other day that was in a goddamn couple of weeks ago, a guy that I watched, he got in a fucking motorcycle accident. He got in, like, a crazy motorcycle accident. And they had to, like, it's it's just nuts, man. And the guy that hit him, I'll tell you about it later because I just thought it was so wild. Apparently, the guy that hit him drove him to the goddamn hospital. And he's like, eh, you know, I'm not going to press charges or anything. But the guy, he was on the side of the road, like, fixing his bike. 
and this guy blasted into him and fucking waffled him, and then the guy got jacked up bad, and he's his head was swollen. He all kinds of shit, and he got taken to the hospital by the guy. And I wonder if you guys would, you know, would not press charges if because the, the guy could have just taken off, but it was just a wild story. I heard that earlier. I want to talk about that later. But um, where do you want, where do you want Owens to go? That's the that's the poll question of the night. Where is Kevin Owens going? Is he going to stay in WWE, AEW, ROH, somewhere else? <coughs> I mean, somewhere else. I don't know, man. But I know one thing. At some point. Like the, the these other people in AEW have to be freaking out, and I know that we've been positive for days, positive for days. Hell, I was positive all weekend. I was having a great time. I stayed up for two days in a row, two days, two nights, whatever you want to call it, and I couldn't friggin' sleep. Uh, I just stayed up, and then Raw came, and I knew it. I knew I was gonna crash during Raw, man. I already knew I was gonna die during Raw because I was like, dude, I've been up for two days. Like I haven't really slept. And Raw was just, was abysmal. It was a shit show. A shit show. A absolute, just murderous shit show. It was the death. Like, the worst, like, it couldn't be any, it couldn't have been any worse. Like, you would think you would do some crazy shit to take people's minds off of how boring it is. You would know not to go out there and throw out a layup. Listen, this other brand is launching all these people doing all this shit. We've got to do some crazy stuff tonight or at least some entertaining stuff so that there's some positive stuff to talk about. And they did. It was alarming how much they did none of that. They cannot equal the wrestling. No doubt about it. What we saw Sunday, which I understand it's not a pay-per-view event. The only thing I told you guys last night, the only thing I told I liked about Raw was Charlotte's weird edginess. I thought that was interesting in a way. And the only other thing that I enjoyed was, you know, was carrying Cross, man. I thought Cross was funny as fuck. I thought him being like, um, you know, oh, I'm going to end your existence. Like, it was so over-the-top stupid but crazy that... I thought it was funny. I thought it was good. I actually liked Karrion Cross. Like, I, I don't know. I can't explain it. Maybe, maybe it just caught me on the funny bone at that time. I understand if other people thought it was stupid. Maybe it was. I definitely get it. Um, DJ Scandalous, what's up, man? Maybe AEW can throw impact some guys they barely use, like Janela, Archer, Team Taz. That's a good idea, DJ uh, Scandalous. <clears throat> Get the, I mean, I, you know, I like, I wish Janela was in matches. I feel like he could be in matches. Like, there could be hardcore matches before the show starts, after the show starts, during the show. By the way, we're at 69 likes, which is just the greatest thing ever. It makes my insides feel warm as hell. I am, everybody's wants him in AEW. I mean, let's face it, the poll's already at 100 votes and we're at AEW. Oh, let me get, I'm sorry, if you want to donate, yeah, Bill, it, they're on, all the donations are on, obviously. Uh, what's up, John, how you doing, man? Fan commitment, dedication, it's the only thing that keeps WWF alive. Um, uh, yeah, I'll drop the link for you, hold on a second. Sorry, dude, I thought you were, I thought you were trolling me, I, I muted the account, my bad, I, I, un I unmuted it for you, my bad. Um, but here's, here's the link, thanks. <clears throat> Howdy, how you doing? I I C M K. What's up? The breaking news is Kevin Owens' contract is up. Kevin Owens' contract is up. Kevin Owens tweeted out coordinates that equal Mount Rushmore, then deleted the tweet, and uh, indicating that he's going to potentially be joining his former group uh, that he had with Adam Cole and all of them. I you know I don't know. I mean, th just a this is like a mass exodus right now. It feels like it just feels like everybody's on board the the sailboat at this point like everybody is sailing away from wwe it's you know what i mean like every man for himself right now in wwe and i got a couple things i'm going to show you guys in a few minutes and i appreciate everybody that enjoyed my uh tweets to wwe last night as i acted like a psycho i hope everybody enjoyed i certainly did enjoy going to sleep last night because i was tired as hell obviously and uh we got a lot of uh excitement uh, going on right now. Let me uh, jump into the 
jump into the donos. I know that Discord's I know that Discord's like probably got somebody in it somewhere. So it's probably a couple people in Discord, but let me just jump over here to uh see what's what's going on here. I'm sorry. Mick Foley was one hundred right though. Still can't believe you release a mind and talent like Bray. Soon WWE gonna have no roster. <laughs> I'm surprised Iconics Haven T showed up yet somewhere. Bring them back WWE, you get belts and no teams. Yo, uh, uh, Alexa sweet ass, thank you for the for the dono, man. Thanks for the three dollars. What's up? Appreciate that. And yeah, I agree. Like I listen, I like listen, Mick Foley's not wrong. I my tweet kind of crapping on Mick Foley. And listen, I like I'll always love Mick Foley. He can say oh, whatever shit, he wants. On. I love this guy. Mick Foley is a god. He jumped off the cage. He did everything. He entertained the hell out of me as a kid. I love you, Mick Foley. I really do. But Mick Foley is also a, a weird fake New Yorker. I don't know why he is, but he is. Listen, I like Mick Foley. He seems sweet. I you know, I bless his heart. I swear to God, I love Mick Foley. But when WrestleCrate was created by the man with a son, WrestleCrate, the owner of WrestleCrate, with him and his son created WrestleCrate, they first approached Mick Foley about doing it. And then Mick Foley said, eh, I don't think so. Uh. And then two months later, Mick Foley launched his own WrestleCrate with a different company. Um, and that was fucked up. And New York, you know, Mick Foley's from New York, and we know how that, that, that goes in that state. So he was oh, like, hey, thanks for the idea, brother. I'll just take that and run. So Mick Foley took the wrestle crate and they called it uh, what was it uh, pro wrestling crate, and that was the first time somebody ever said anything bad about Mick Foley. And I was like, really? I don't know. Oh man, Mick Foley's so sweet. I don't believe this at all. But over the years, Mick Foley would get mad at me when I criticized WWE. But then, when the whole Daniel Bryan thing happened, Mick Foley got angry at WWE when he wasn't on the payroll and he broke a TV. He was so mad and he got upset on Twitter and everything. Everybody remembers that. Then WWE brought Mick Foley back in to unveil the Universal Championship, and suddenly Mick Foley was Team WWE again, and Mick Foley would again crap on you on Twitter if you had anything negative to say about WWE. It was fascinating, uh, you know, how that worked out. Uh, so, I listen, I don't know if I buy anything from Foley. Foley only says things depending on his payment. So who's paying Foley next is is what it's about from him. So I agree with Mick Foley's, you know, comments and everything else. He's right. I agree with him. I just don't, you know, pat people patting him on the back. I don't really, I don't really buy that. You know, it's whatever. Uh, but I love my, Mick Foley, and, he, and really he can do no wrong. So I, I, you know, pat him on the back all day. I listen. I owe that guy. We all owe that guy. He retained the shit out of us. What's up, Jacob? Yo, what's up, man? How you doing? I wanted to chime in on the uh, basically on the ROH guys going over to uh, AEW. Yeah, I, I think I, the, I think they should. Well, I the, mean, the rape of also, ROH. I'm expect. Go ahead. I said the rape of ROH. Poor Ring of Honor didn't get shit out of any of this past four three years, and they facilitated the whole beginning of AEW. Really. Yeah, but they're pussies. ROH is like third level below yeah. everybody else. ROH is like last place, so you know whatever. And uh, honestly, listen, I'm oh. I'm happy for these guys. Like they weren't doing shit with Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens' time in WWE actually did come to a halt because I lost total interest in that guy. At first, when he faced John Cena, when he came out with that NXT title, and to face John Cena, that was awesome. That was back then. That was a few years ago, right? Yeah, yeah, I remember that. So, like, I don't honestly listen. If they're not using you, go somewhere else. Do something with yourself. Life is short. You know, you only live once. Injuries happen. Also, uh, I'm expecting Cesaro to go over there. Cassius or whatever his name was over <laughs> yeah. there. Yeah, um, Possibly uh, Chris Hero. Uh, I'm expecting all these guys to go over there. Cause why not? I mean, it'll be, it'll be like a new type of rebellion. That's probably the, the wrong word. Like it'll be like all these ROH guys just rebelling out against the WWE because they've 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 had their time. They've all won titles. You know, Daniel Bryan, CM Punk, all these guys. They're all even Cesaro. They're all little. You know, they've gotten their awards over there. So it's time to go to a different show and make a new career for themselves, possibly. Yeah, I think they all want to party over there. They all want to hang out. They're all kind of. This is like when an NBA team plans this. Like, hey, we're all let's all go to the Lakers. <laughs> Like that's very similar of what's going on here. I mean, these guys all got yeah, paid. Yeah, that's true. Vince that's was true. right. 
I see how you're looking at it, but also I see it as like it just shows that ROH back in those years was really a brotherhood with, uh, with all these guys. Like even with Samoa Joe in a couple of years, maybe he'll go over there just because you know they're all aligned with with each other. Well, they all wrestled in the same company before, so why not do it again? And I think listen, the big man, thing is they, uh, WWE sucks. Is the big is really the I feel your thing. fucking pain, Joe. I feel you. WWE is super trash right now, bro. I cannot watch that product. In my eyes, I've been watching the highlights on YouTube with what's happening with Bobby Lashley and all these guys. It's just it feels so not WWE. It doesn't feel the same. It's like this, it's like a different company now. And honestly, like Vince is getting older. He's looking older, way older, and. What about this? Like, what about... All right, this will probably never happen. But what about Triple H going to AEW? Maybe he can be the Vince McMahon over there or something like that. That'll probably never happen. Probably a stupid idea. But, hey, man, pro wrestling is dying a little bit. But now, AEW is trying to resurge and trying to pick up the pieces and, you know, push the next generation. Fuck it. Do yeah. it. Yeah, I think this is really interesting, man. I, I, I think that the other people are shitting themselves, though. The younger, like some of the not used AEW mid-card, lower mid-card people, they're like freaking out, dude. They're like, oh my god, another fucking one? What, is there going to be any room for me? What the fuck? They're bringing in another guy. They, I mean, that's the only people that are upset about that. Like, secretly. Like, think of the jealousy and think of wrestling mentality. I mean, you know it. I mean, look at my mentality. I love to play games with everything. Everybody loves to play games in the wrestling community. Look at the people that have ever been around here. I mean, look at the wrestlers. Look at the look at the podcasters, the wrestlers, the YouTubers. Dude, wrestling YouTubers won't even work together because if you reach out to someone, they're like, oh, this is mine. I'm not going to do anything. Ah. Like, they're crazy, dude. I've reached out to so many people, and they just don't want to do it. They're like, yeah, I'll come on your show. They don't want you on their show. It's so we it's so weird. So you know there's some lower end talent and some and some mid card talent who are sitting there like, oh, this is great, yeah. But like you know that they're smiling, but in their head they're like, what the fuck? Like yeah. you know, because they're like, oh no, there goes my piece of this. Like I'm out of here. Look at what yeah. happened to all the original guys. Like they're fucked. And also, let's be honest, man. WWE isn't really losing anything because they have over 300 superstars on the fucking roster. They have way too many people on the roster to begin with. I think it's good for AEW. I'm proud of them because now they have a real roster, I think, so far. Right. Maybe they need more. But they, before, it was like 20 guys in the fucking roster, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And then, but, but no, I like it. Listen, I, I agree with it. I'm all for it. Now, yes, I will be watching AEW. They got my attention. That, before... Dude. I've heard that from yeah. so many people that, like, really, I'm dead serious. People are like, eh, I'm not watching or whatever. This is the first time where people are saying that. They're like, dude, they got my attention. And I'm like, this got your attention? None of the other stuff did? But whatever, who cares how and why and whatever now, it's happening. People are paying attention. So I'm tomorrow night's rating, tomorrow night's dynamite is going to be a huge indicator tomorrow night. Oh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Of how many of these people and like, jumped listen, on. I mean... Yeah, they got. You want to know a why they got my attention is because before their roster looks like complete nobodies. They have no muscle. All their guys are below six feet, I think, mostly. And like, even the new guys, Daniel Bryan and Adam Cole, they're all, they're all not that big, but like they're stars. They're real stars. They're known mm. at least by some people. I mean, you mentioned to anybody who the fuck is MJF? Even MJF, he's great, but he's not known like. Like, like how he should be, you know, how WWE can make you known. But I'm proud of AEW, you know, yes, I'll be, I'll be watching. Um, WWE, I feel sad because we all grew up with this shit. Uh, Vince is getting older. That's pretty sad, even though right now it's like, fuck him be for basically killing the business. Not the business, but, you know, the E. Um, but, I mean, I have no hate in my heart for AEW, so I'll give it a chance. I, dude, I think you're gonna like it. And and the thing that's good about MJF is if somebody looks at him and goes, "Who's this little guy? I don't I've never seen him before," you know. And maybe they go back and see the stuff with Jericho. That's cool. But the good thing is he can speak so well that when they start hearing his promos right away, they're gonna be like, "Oh shit, this guy can talk!" Like right away, MJF blows away anybody in WWE. The only person who's on the mic anything like MJF is maybe Roman, because Roman's given the, the you know all that material. But, dude, I think MJF would shred Roman, you know, essentially. So if you see this guy talk, you're going to be like, damn, this guy can speak, you know, and he's he's not the biggest guy. But So, yeah, that's that's a that's good. 
You know that if you know these, you know all these other guys, but this guy over here can speak. So you're not gonna. It's not gonna take long for you to get acclimated to believing the guy. Because I didn't either at first. When I first saw MJF, I saw him in the ring or something, and was like, whatever. I never even noticed him. There's a million people, and then I saw him cut a little promo and was like, all right, that guy's kind of interesting, I guess. And then I saw him cut more, and it was like, damn, this guy's nuts. I love it. Love the guy. He was trained under. Uh, I think Cornette trained him a bunch, too. So that's a big thing. This guy was trained to shitload. He was in MLW. You know, this guy worked around a lot of old school type people, and it, that's his style. He's kind of like a Rick Martel, uh, Ted DiBiase type. You know, with with the mouth of. I just wish I just wish it was bigger though, physically. Like I yeah. wish he had more muscle or taller. Like it matters. It does matter a little bit because when you see these guys on TV next uh-huh. to other people, you know, compared to other people in the ring, like you know, mm-hmm. they they stand out. Yeah. Yeah, even like a guy like where Owens used to be kind of lower mid-sized or smaller, bit but fat, you know. People call him fat or out of shape, whatever, but he was kind of a smaller, you know, type of guy. He's not a heavyweight exactly. So, but it's like MJF really looks small. He's actually a little bit bigger I think than we think, but he's I want to say he's my height, to be honest. He might be six feet, but I think he might be my height. If you know, if I worked out, you know, I, I would yeah. be around that. But Darby Allen's tiny. You know, he was in with C- CM Punk, and I do this fucking small man. I can't get behind him at all. Have you seen him do a dive outside the ring though? Did you yes, watch that I've Punk seen match? The he's crazy. Backwards dives, the, the back. Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen highlights of him. I've been watching recently what's been happening with him and CM Punk. It's just he is too fucking small, and he's wearing uh, whatever he's wearing. Uh, it's weird <laughs> what he's wearing, but I like it. He stands out. He's like, he has the character down. He has the face. The, the face uh, expressions and all that, but it's just size matters, dude, in wrestling. Well, one thing about him is, you know, he's just... I just enjoy him because he does a dive better than anybody except Ray Phoenix. Him and Ray Phoenix do a great dive, and he does the coffin drop, which I find exciting when he hits it. I don't know why I pop for that when he crashes down onto someone on the coffin drop. That is him, too. That's like, this is the guy. He's been this yeah. way. He's been this kind of punk goth uh, type you know, forever. And so this is really him. He's really bringing himself with the energy turned up, as they always say, in a way, or with the theater turned up. Oh, yeah, up. I'm digging it. I'm so, digging it, brother. I, I love the character. I but love all I, I said the same thing as you at first. I said, man, he is small, though. I don't know. He's basically it's like. just that he is small, man. That guy is short, short. He's short, way, he's way too short. Know, know. Maybe, he's like, Maybe it's me being petty saying that, or I'm coming from a different perspective. No, you're just. But. No, I get it. You're used to the big guys. But I mean, he looks to me. Like Ta- Taka Michinoku, and we, and maybe you were too young, but Taka Michinoku in 1998 in the WWF in the lightweight division, he really reminds me of Taka, like Taka or X Pac, and I think Darby's small. Oh, yeah, Taka was small too. Taka was small too. Taka yeah. was small. X Pac was bigger than Darby, but but it is, and, and you know what? You saw that. You see the video of them emulating the Macho Man uh, match with one two three or my, one two three kid and Bret Hart rather, basically CM Punk and. Uh, Darby like copied a lot of the stuff from the match on purpose, and so it was interesting. But uh, let me, uh, Jag, yo, Jag, is your mic working? Yeah, I'm on. I just oh. I, I don't like to interrupt. So no, you're good. I just wanted to bring you in because uh, I see you on here. So what's so up? you guys and everybody yo. in the chat, how many guys, how many superstars do you think WWE is going to lose next year to AEW? I Did mean, you say lose. Yeah, they're, they're, this is going to continue happening, right? More guys are going to leave and just have the, the the contract expire and just go. And it's going to be interesting to see who goes. Well, eventually, they're going to run out of, you know, they're not going to be able to hire everybody. So this can't, I can't Why imagine. Why not? They got the money for it. I mean, they got a hundred and. Yeah, but I mean, you at, at some point, you have your business has to be profitable. I mean, he may have a lot of money, but right. I mean, at some point, you're going to have to be in the positive. Otherwise, why do you keep hiring people? Uh well, WWE has how many superstars on their roster in total, including Two Hundred Five Live, NXT, and all those fucking rosters? They have at least three hundred fucking superstars, dog. That's a lot. It's a lot yeah, to focus yeah. on. Way but too many titles. Way too many shows. Like yeah. it's too much. Uh, AEW needs more. Actually, they're they're too small of a roster. They can continue growing. Fuck it. Why not? I would say even th- if I would all these guys three. come over like a small Joe <clears> and <throat> just ends up being a manager or a commentator, I could see that happening too. In 2022, I would say three to five. Sith Negan said something like that in the chat. I think a lot of people kind of feel that way. Um, I can see Seth Rollins going over there. Tyler Black. I can see him going over there. Uh, it's just a change of scenery. That's all it really is, because you're still in the wrestling world. Yeah. I mean, we're all going to know who you are. It's just a change of job, basically. 
and by the looks of things, dude, like in, in the videos, or they're probably trying to milk it or or whatever, but like they make it seem like AEW is fun to work for. Yeah, you know the whole friendly thing. Oh, we're all best friends, whatever. Gay crap. Okay, that kind of like draw like pulls me away. But like, the, like just working for these people, it just seems like it's fun, and there's energy <laughs> over there too. Yeah, yeah. There's there's, excitement. It's the energy. It's the excitement. That's what it really is. That's like jump the train. Fuck it. But there's gonna be no like. There's gonna be no. There's gonna they're gonna run out of spots eventually. You know what I mean? Like it's not it can't just keep going. Plus they're gonna be all shit bags coming from WWE at this point. WWE is just gonna be a nightmare, man. All these casual people are gonna be able to watch it, like bless their hearts. But everybody else, you know, look what it did to me last night. I couldn't even function. Oh shit. Oh my god, OJ Simpson. Oh he might be creeping. His ass might be leaking. He's wearing I saw Biden earlier put his mask down to talk to all the reporters, and then he walked out into an empty field and, and put it on. <laughs> I thought that was the funniest. We get it, Biden. No matter what they say, we can make Jacob RP. Yo, baby. He's friends with all of the nuns. Communism in China's great. It's a man. Hey JCS World, it's yours truly. Yo. Well, summer is almost over and fall season is almost here. And when I mean fall, I ain't talking about the weather changing. I'm talking about the fall of the white man. Oh. I'm gonna gut, maim and rape a snowy white cunt tonight. Oh my God, snow bunnies. OJ Simpson, 32. What the hell, OJ? You see what I did in the coals? I what I did in the coals hole? You see what I did to it? Uh, thank you, OJ. Uh, you have now taken over the top dono spot. Uh, let me get you up here. It does pain me to put a murderer up here, but allegedly, um, you know, and you even got simp in your name. That's a little scary. You know, like I don't, I don't trust any man. <laughs> <Simp>. Yeah, <laughs> I don't trust any man who has simp in their name. Okay, you sicko. For sure. But it's okay. We'll put you up here anyway. OJ Simpson, top donator. There he is. I'll put him up big on the screen for everybody. There you go, OJ Simpson. Top donator, ten bucks. Who can beat that? New twenty-five dollar donation, by the way. Uh, so Jacob, are you? I know the other thing tonight. I know we're talking about wrestling, and we're going to talk more about wrestling. And a lot of people want to talk about a lot of different things. And we're going to bring people on Discord. And we're going to hang out with all you guys. It's going to be fun. Yay! We'll talk about anything you want. Anything goes here because obviously it's throwdown. But Jacob, are you a Matrix person or no? Uh, I think I've watched the movie like twice. I never really. I don't really remember most of it. I, I watched the movie. I know what it is, but um, why? They're doing a reboot of that of that too? Well, The Matrix 4, we've been talking about, Jesus Christ. We've been talking about it no, for- No, yeah. I mean, I'll watch it because it, it seems, uh, well, the story. I like the story. You can I say like I have no idea. I don't even know. If it comes out, I might see it. I have no idea. That's And that's I'm pretty a- sure the graphics are going to look insane. I mean, all that, ba- you know, that, that Matrix shit that they do. Well, dude, in, when they did the first, uh, when they did the first Matrix- they didn't have the technology to quite do what they wanted to do. So I think, I believe, the first Matrix 1999 is great. But the second and third ones are, like, a little bit rough. And part of that is because they were like, oh, we gonna, we're going to use all this brand new technology that's now available. But it was, like, still kind of not ironed out yet. So, like, there was a little bit of an issue there where it didn't look so hot at times and things like that. And you can see it in Matrix 2 especially. But um, either way, so that's fine, man. You're like a casual. You, you know, you probably go see it, but maybe you remember it, maybe you don't. I get that. Jag depends. But good are, for uh, good for Keanu Reeves, though. Like he's a yeah. he's a good actor. I like him. I like. Listen, people used to call him a horrible actor, but he just gets better and better every year, and he's a great human. And uh, guy's been through trauma in his life with his kid and wife and everything. Oh, it's just awful. Uh, Jag depends. what did you want to talk about? Nothing. I just wanted to hop in, say hi. <laughs> What's up? Nothing on your mind. What's anything? No, you just hanging uh, out. No, any drugs tonight or really drugs or no? Long for the ride. Do you do cocaine? Are you gonna see the Matrix? I have actually never seen the Matrix. Wow. Oh. What the hell? Yeah. The oh, fuck. <clears throat> so I so when I was when the Matrix came out, how old are you? Uh, twenty one in like three weeks. Oh my god, just kill me, chop. Um, no, legal. so legal. it was nineteen. So. It, 
All right. So in 1998, all the press for the Matrix movie was out everywhere. And I did one of the things that I sometimes do, which is everybody's talking about a movie. So I just kind of was like, all right, I'm, I'm not going to see it. Everybody's fucking overboard on this stupid thing. And the Matrix came out and I didn't see it right away. And it wasn't until like a, a year later, I think I ordered it or something. And I watched the first Matrix finally. And I was like, holy shit. I loved it. And I was like, can't wait. They're going to do more. Oh, my God. And it took like four years for them to come out or three years for them to come out. And, um, yeah, it was I I enjoyed them, even though the second and third one were kind of wishy-washy. But, hey, at least, Jag, Jag, if you haven't seen it, at least you can watch it now. I don't know. It depends if you like. Oh, yeah. I like sci-fi. So the sci-fi element of the movie is what I loved. Not the not really the action part, but the action parts were cool. But um. Do you like, do you like, do you like Fast and the Furious? Yeah, actually, last night I finished uh, Tokyo Drift. I know that one's not very popular in the series, but I don't know. It has its moments. So actually, I, I like Tokyo Drift. Out of a lot of them, I think that was kind of the best for me, was the best one. Maybe we could get yeah. Kevin Owens in the next uh, Fast and the Furious. He could play the ghost of Paul Walker. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. No, but <laughs> crashing another portion to a wall. Yeah, with his. Yo, I still, hey, I kids, still want to go for a ride? That, guy died, dog. that was sad. No, that was awful. I mean, listen, I'm not even. A, I actually hate the goddamn movies. I didn't see. Hey, you I, know how the internet, the internet works, and you know all the videos and pictures were spreading around. It was just terrible. Oh, dude, what a terrible night. Dude, I was like that franchise. That guy's a huge part of that. That I knew it. Like, so I was, uh, I was sad. I, even though I don't even like. I don't even like the Fast and the Furious, but I was like, Jesus, that's like the main guy. That's like one of the main characters. Like, what the hell are you going to, how are they going to go forward now with that series? Exactly. That's exactly what I was thinking. How do you even go forward without him? Like, I only, but with um, technology and him having a brother, you know? Yeah. I only saw the first one and I was like, all right, I'm done with these. But, you know, Matrix is actiony. And that's part of the reason why, like, my wife doesn't really like the Matrix because it's actiony. So I figured if you like Fast and the Furious, you, pro- you might like, you might like the Matrix, but it has this sci-fi element to it that I like. Um, so oh yeah, yeah. And it looks crazy, like fun to watch this movie. I mean, there's so much going on. I mean, we all know we all know Keanu Reeves, and it looks like it's action-packed. And yeah, I, I mean, can't believe most you, people love, like action. So I just can't believe you guys haven't seen it. I'm shocked. Like this is. Uh, um, I mean, I've watched the movies. It's just that I don't remember exactly what happened, who died, what this, what happened. Like, right. It, it was, well, I, I watched it twice, but I liked it. It took me a while to see a lot of movies. Actually, <clears throat> probably Jag to Panzer's uh, uh, age, I think, was when I, I saw a lot of movies when I was like, I want to say 18, like 18, 19, and 20. I really saw a lot of movies, like a lot. Like I remember I, you know, I was out of high school. And when you get out of high school, that's when it is because you're out of high school, you have nothing to do. You know, I didn't last in college. My girlfriend had moved to her college in New York, so I had, like, weeks of not seeing her. And just other than hanging out with my buddies, there was nothing else to do. So I would I watched so many movies, man. I loved that time. Like, 2003 and four. I was, like, just fucking watching movies every second. I watched, like, Stanley Kubrick. I had only seen, like, h- half of his movies. I'd probably saw, obviously, I saw, like, The Shining and... I'd seen, I, I think I'd sort of seen Clockwork Orange a couple times, like pieces of it, but I never really saw it. And people, you know, always talked about it. And, you know, even kids in high school had the poster of Clockwork Orange and I hadn't seen it. And I was like, all right, I'm going to watch the whole thing. And I did. And so like all I get to see so many movies. So I feel like from the age of maybe 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, that's when you really go through watching a shitload of movies if you like them. But how are, are, they should make they should make going to the movies fun again. I, I lost interest. In yeah, that. well, the, I know there hasn't been a shooting in a while, but I'm saying like you know, oh. a, <laughs> <laughs> it's all it's really exciting when you're gambling with your life. Now they got COVID to worry about too. That's funny. You're you're in the theater. No, you're, I mean, also, there. I mean, I think this is a stupid <laughs> idea, but they should release movies right away, like on stream, like a streaming app that's yeah. like. 50 bucks a month or like 100 bucks a month for all the movies that come out instead of having to go buy a fire stick and go through that whole process you know like it would be fun if they had like an app where like all, all the new movies come out and you legally watch it all cool and dandy yeah, right. <laughs> legally 
Yeah, I know. You're like, you're sitting in the movie and you're like, you're looking around and somebody goes, shoo! And you're like, oh, fuck. Oh my God. I'm like, oh, they might have COVID. Because then, I'm a lazy American, okay? I'm Latino, but I am also very lazy and I don't want to go to the movies all the time. So it would be nice if I could just watch the new movie at home. Well, you can actually, I believe The Matrix, you're going to be able to watch at home. So that's, really? yeah, that's because it's part of the whole, uh, Maybe Jag knows or somebody. Knows. It's like is it HBO or it's one of those things. Like someone in the chat knows. It's one of those things. Me, I pirate everything. So. <laughs> oh right, well, See, okay. Wow, you are a piece really of shit. Is pirate. what you are. That you're a piece <laughs> of shit. What do you mean you pirate everything? Oh my god. What is this? Nine. This is two thousand two again. There's a lot. Oh yeah, of that's something there, actually man. maybe excite me. I mean, I'll I'll actually plan for that. How do you? I'll make a whole I make a whole scene of it. Bob the popcorn, the soda, this and that, the candy. Um, I, can't I don't it. go to the movies anymore, so I'm gonna start doing that. I love the movies, man. I can't. I I just can't pirate. The, I just don't. I don't know, man. I can't do it. I want to. I don't know. I, like, all right. If you don't, if you absolutely have no money, I understand. Like, but if it's not a lot, I don't. I don't know. I mean, like, I think the HBO thing is like eight bucks or something. You know, I I don't wow. know. You can fuck while it's the movie 15. plays. It's thirteen. Yeah, it's around fifteen dollars. It's HBO Max, is what it is. Porn included? Yeah. Uh, no. there's no porn, no. Oh, probably a separate <laughs> thing, yeah. But uh, so the the what's up, villain? How you doing? Doing all right. You know, I just oh. watched All Out not too long ago, man. Wow. Jesus Christ, are you calling me from a dildo? What what is that? <laughs> from a dildo. <laughs> no, sorry. It's okay. I just wanted you to know whatever mic you're using, it might not be hooked up right. You sound like, you sound like you're your phone at room, the party. Dude. Yeah, you sound like a robot. It's okay though. We'll, we'll figure it out, or maybe not. But villain, I love you. What's up? But no, it's uh, AW was so high on Sunday that I didn't sleep, dude. I was fired up, and then by Raw, dude, I was just done with Raw. I was like, I I have nothing to say about this. I felt that show depressed me. That show ruined my faith in life the other day. It looks really fake too. It looks really fake. The 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 whole output on like just the whole look on wwe right now just looks really tacky and fake and cartoony and they've been like that for years but like they look extra cartoony now and matt Ritter with the scooter and these butterflies flying around on the, on the tv for the graphics of the entrances eh. <laughs> Jesus. i don't i don't need all the big flashy lights and the colors and the nxt logo being colorful and shit just give me the fucking wrestling and the stories and the stars well, make it, make it impactful, man. Yeah, man, I agree. I, camera cuts. Well, that's what AEW, I think, for the most part, does. I mean, I even, I mean, I had sometimes I have a little trouble with AEW's cuts. I think they cut too much too, but or they don't have a wide enough shot. I, I think wrestling in general should be filmed a little differently. But WWE, forget also, it. Also, I think it's time to let go of Michael Cole. I think it's time. Oh my god! <laughs> that, like, I think it's time. Michael Cole has to go. I think it's time voice, to get him off commentary. Kevin Dunn. Yeah, get him off commentary. But he's he's. I wouldn't no. I would keep kept Michael Cole as a producer. Like no way I would get maybe rid of him. not raw. You know maybe he should be just a different. Well, he's on SmackDown. New, man. He's on SmackDown. What are you bullfrog? Oh, he's on SmackDown. No, yeah, I don't watch every. You don't every know the Matrix. You haven't seen wrestling. Like you don't know you're on drugs right now. I love yeah. you. That's Actually, funny. yeah, yeah. See, uh, are you gonna watch the Matrix? 167 votes say yes. Gonna watch the trailer Thursday. No, 35 percent and 23 percent maybe. Listen, the website is fire for the people that don't know the younger people. Um, you guys remember maybe in 1999, you know, websites were huge in 99. Anybody could make a special website. It was so fun. Um, the, the Matrix had a website where it was like all the code was coming down and it was fucking awesome. Like, and, and it was like, what's the Matrix? What is the Matrix type of thing? And they'd had all these puzzles and weird hidden flash things in there and everything. And then they did it again in 03 and 03, actually 03 when the two other movies came out. And it was really cool. And they did it again now. So you can go to... Um, the Matrix, uh, what is the Matrix dot com, and you can see um, th it's crazy. You can either take the red pill or the blue pill, and uh, depending on what you click on, obviously you're going to get a different thing. And when you click on it, let me go to video mode here so you guys can see what I'm doing. And th this came out just today. This is a big thing, and so you can choose, you know, which pill you take. You take the obviously I'm going to take the red pill, and then it opens up. It's, look, look at this. It's going to tell you... Oh, I don't know if it doesn't work because I'm streaming. Let me see. you got to keep your mouse on the screen. This is crazy. This is the moment. 
for you to show us what is real right now. We believe it's 9.23 p.m. But that couldn't be further from the truth. Could be. This is the first day of the rest of your life. But if you want it, you gotta fight for it. That's a badass trailer right there. Oh, that's a badass trailer. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I'm Isn't down. I'm down. What was that? Isn't training supposed to take over Neo? Like, he was supposed to be like. I don't know. We don't really know. I know the te So, the trailer's Thursday. Okay, so here's some of the information, too, that I've heard from three different people. Three different people have basically been spoiled on what the deal is. And they're like, the only concern is people are saying that the, you might think, oh, fuck, it's woke. It's a little woke. Like, it's got woke stuff. It's going to piss people off. So I am a little concerned about that. I don't know if that blue-haired girl is the girl from the Animatrix, if anybody knows. I just remember seeing the Animatrix, and there was somebody with blue hair, and I never watched, I believe it or not, I never watched the Animatrix. Just didn't do it. So I don't know. Maybe that's them. Maybe that's not them. I'm not 100% sure. But um, me and Jake were speculating on this for a long time. You know, is Trinity the new whatever? It seems like things have reset, and they're in the Matrix and they're trying to figure out whatever. We'll find out Thursday, apparently. Apparently Thursday, like, basically will come out with, you know, you'll understand sort of what's going on, I, which is... a rehash of the first one. Well, it's sort of a, it, like, it's sort of a rebooty type of thing, no doubt, you know, but I don't know what that means. But Joe will be watching The Matrix 4 because he sports transsexuals and he's also had an affair with, what the fuck, Repo Man? Jesus Christ. No, that's the rumor, though, by uh, that person. But I have the emails that show otherwise. Um, purple penis. Purple penis. Um, oh, but it's weird because a whole bunch of people told me I lied about that, though. So how can you be saying that? Huh. It's weird. It's almost like people are lying. It's weird. Imagine somebody saying something about me, and then when I get mad and say something about it, then everybody pretends that didn't happen, and then I'm an asshole. It's, like, weird. This community Doesn't is Doesn't that guy call again? What was that? Didn't that guy call again that did the purple penis thing like he a did. year later or something? Yeah, he called uh, not that long ago. It was like, I want to say it was eight months ago or something like that, or a year. Maybe it was eight months ago, six months ago, something like that. He called and he was like, but he wasn't as animated and as, as psycho. He was like, hey, Joe. Uh, and we we're like, oh, you're." The, he's like, yeah, you know the deal. But he wasn't as, I don't know, man. He wasn't as unhinged as he was the first time. He was more like. Yeah, he was more concerning, actually, because he was just weird. But I don't... He didn't say anything about Stephanie's purple penis this time. So, I don't know. I don't know what's up. So, I went to, real quick, uh, we'll come back to... We have more Kevin Owens, Kevin Steen news, AEW news, uh, and some other things. We'll come back to it. But, before we do that, um, just looking at the cast and crew of The Matrix, and obviously, for the people that don't know, The Matrix has always been a little... I don't, I don't really think the other Matrix were woke-ish. But they were very diverse. They had a very diverse cast. They had, um, you know, the, the Wachowskis brothers turned into the Wachowski sisters. Both of them became women, which is one of them became a woman first. And then it was like the other one then became a woman also later on, much later. Um, so they are, you know, I, I look at their posts on Twitter. They're very social justice. They're very woke people type, you know, um, I, one of them seems a little more realistic than the, the other one's a little more out there with stuff. One of them's a little bit more like accepting and normal about it. I don't know. I, the other one's kind of just whacked out with all kinds of things. So you're going to see something, I would assume, in these movies. They even went on to say like the movie's uh, about about that or something, and nobody knows how is it the movie about that. But So you're going to get this diversity. You're going to get that stuff. So if that's the reason why you think the movie is, oh, it's going woke, then I don't believe that. But... Apparently, there's other things that are going to make people upset. So I'm worried about that, man. They've buried every single one of our franchises. Everything we ever loved in our fran any franchises have been destroyed. And so the minute that The Matrix 4 was announced, a couple when we talked about it a couple of years ago, it was like, uh-oh. Like, like, it's like I'm happy, kind of, to see that, but also you're really worried. So I'm concerned. Um, but this is, we got Keanu Reeves. Jessica Henwick is the girl we saw in the video with the colored hair. Obviously, Trinity's back. Here's an interesting thing. Lambert Wilson is back as the Merovingian. So he's back uh, in here somewhere. 
Uh, Jada Pinkin Smith is back as Niobe. That's cool. I don't know if this guy played Agent Johnson before. I'm not sure. There's a lot of secrecy here. Names and people's names aren't there. So we what's going on. Neil Patrick Harris is. I think he's actually maybe playing a psychiatrist, but I, I think he might be actually playing an agent as a psychiatrist. But I'm not sure about that. I don't know. It's all just speculation. Let's drop a dono and see what's up. Uh, a lot of people jumped on Discord. Hunter, I'll try to get over to you and James Woodcock. I'll try to get you in here in a minute. Dunkachino? Don't mind if I do. What's up, Chris Elkins? What's my name? Dunkachino. It's a whole new game. No. Dunkachino. You want creamy goodness? I'm your friend. Say hello to my chocolate blend. Kevin Owens should go to AEW. Kevin Owens should go to AEW, says Chris Elkins. I mean, I, that's what the chat voted on earlier, basically. I think it summed up everybody was, I think it was 68% go to AEW. So, so many people he can work with there. I mean, him and Adam Cole, you know, have done the stuff. Daniel Bryan, he's already worked with these guys a bunch in WWE. So, I mean, CM Punk versus Kevin Steen would be awesome, too. That'd be, there's so many matches, dude. There's so many things to see. Uh, Shit bomb. Chris, thank you. Shardy Gennetti. I don't mind the wrestlers being smaller these days. If they're all small, then it's okay. It's all relative. And a majority of them are smaller, so it works. Yeah. They can do more exciting shiz in the ring. Yeah, it doesn't It, it doesn't really bother me. I'll, just sometimes you think about it. You're like, man, I'm bigger than this guy. So, you know, as long as it's entertaining, I don't care what you are. I don't care you're small, big, whatever. I don't care. As long as you're entertaining, that's important. I'm entertained by Darby Allen. At first, when I first saw him, I was like, oh. But the whole skateboard gimmick and everything he's got going on, it it, it just fits. Shardy Gennetti, thanks, man. That's one of their only homegrown, talented people, man, that I think he just seems so. He just seems real, too. You're like, this is him. Like, I believe this guy is this character in this way. And Every time I watch his matches, he always kills himself. Like, yeah, he's like a car wreck, dude. He, you know, yeah, he reminds me of if Mick Foley and Taka Michinoku – had a baby. That's kind of what he's like. He's like this light heavyweight or lightweight cruiserweight type who's hard hitting, but he's also got the recklessness in a way of the McFoley type. So it's, yeah, I don't know, man. I I think he reminds me of that. I don't know why. He's uh, only five eight, so he's short. Damn, that's actually taller than I thought. Cause I'm, I mean, I'm five ten. That's not much shorter than. That's almost my height. Is it Adam Cole at 5'10 or at 6 feet? They say Adam Cole's 6 feet. I don't know, man. He looks t he looks real small. Adam Cole, his like shoulders like bend in. I don't know. He's like he's my height. You know, Adam Cole. He's in good shape though. I'm in shit shape. I look like, you know, Stay Puff Marshmallow Man at this point. Dunkachino? Don't mind if I do. Andale Peasy, oh, who dropped a, a great music video earlier today. Go check out Andale Peasy's YouTube. Do you think Raw's rating benefited from Mary's great show? Um, do you think Raw's rating benefited from AEW's great show, Andale Peasy? Yeah, a lot of people have been thinking that and saying that. Like, but you know, listen, you got to give them their credit when they have their credit. So, I I think a lot of people checked it out. I mean, AEW's viewership is down. Rampage viewership is down. I didn't even look at the Raw viewership. Does anybody know what that is? What is it? Time slot. It's 10 o'clock. A lot of people are sleeping or, like, partying or whatever. Well, I mean, like, did you see... Um, did you, I'm, I'm live now, uh, JB. Um, did you see um, what the rating was for Raw? Oh man, I think your th I think your stuff shit itself. Uh, let me bring in Hunter real quick. Yo, Hunter, what's up? Maybe Hunter's got to get his mic rolling too. Rip. He's dead. We'll bring you back, Hunter, in a minute. Um, James Woodcock. Let's bring in Woodcock because anybody with cock in their name is a winner to me. <laughs> he might have to get his shit together too, or he's having the glitch. What the hell? What is this? He's muted. Or I guess he muted himself. I don't know. What is what is Bullfrog sending me? Here's uh, Kevin Owens. They are the people. 
PWG Tag Team Champions. Yes. He is the PWG World Champion. And we are the Mount Rushmore of professional wrestling. <laughs> Matt Rushmore. Matt, Matt Rushmore. Matt Rushmore, guys. That's not what we're Matt putting Rushmore. on the shirt. Mount Rushmore. Mount Rushmore. I like Matt Rushmore. Rushmore. And this <laughs> is just the beginning. That's not what we're putting on the shirt. That was funny. That's <laughs> not what we're putting on the shirt. That's hey, funny uh, shit. Yo. Hey, uh, I, I think we're going to see you live tomorrow on Friday with NXT Cuts. They go live with this new show next week. You're Look, right. NXT yeah, so big NXT cuts, you think, this week before Friday? I think we're going to see the death of uh, Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano this week. Jo- imagine that, Johnny Gargano and Ciampa, like, like kayfabe die in their last match on Friday night. They go through the ring or, or they go through a table or through something crazy, and then they just never come out, and we don't know what happened, and they leave the company. That'd be a good way to go out. I like that idea. And then we never find out uh-huh. what happens. But Vince and Bruce fully in charge Tuesday. They want to get rid of Triple H totally. That's his bread and butter is Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa. <laughs> well, listen, Triple H don't want to be there anyway, so get rid of all. I, I hate them all. I, I really believe it. I believe that Triple H, if I was Triple H, this would be it, this would be it for me. I'd be like, I'm done. I'm out of this. I'm leaving. I'm going yeah, to AEW. It's like you, Joe. I couldn't go to sleep. I had to work Labor Day, uh, Labor Day at 4 in the morning. I couldn't go to sleep till two o'clock in the morning. I was just so hyped what I saw. Dude, and the buzz, the buzz around work. I yeah. didn't know how many wrestling fans there really were because they were talking about it. I'm like, oh my gosh, like there's wrestling fans here. Like we start talking about AEW. Really? They were so yeah. quiet. You didn't know they were there until they started talking about it. We we're like, oh man, we start talking about it. That's we, funny. I didn't know they were there. <laughs> That's all. Well, you're going to make some new friends now and maybe a, a boyfriend. No, I'm just kidding. But no, ima- dude, I'm imagine imagine if Triple H was like, <laughs> I'm out, Vince. I'm leaving. He's not going to do this. I'm telling you, Vin- Triple H don't care. But imagine Triple H actually caring and being like, I'm leaving. I'm out. You know, my contract's up anyway. I don't give a shit. I, you get me out of everything. And uh, imagine that. And then and then they go to uh, – they go to um, – what the hell is this? They go to Triple H. Uh, they start saying the Ace of Spades is coming or the Spade is coming or something like that. And then Triple H shows up at AEW, <laughs> comes out to the Ace of Spades or something. Joe, so, so I was looking at contracts. <laughs> the, I was Would never at happen. Just, I was looking at contracts just the other day to yeah. see who was coming up in contract. You know that Shane McMahon is on a day-to-day contract? No. What the hell? He's on a day-to-day yes. contract? Yes, he's on a day. He's on a day to day contract. Whenever his contract is up, let him know. Uh, there's he can a leave any time. There's a lot of people who are kind of paid paid by whatever. There's a lot of people in AEW like that too. Like that are just they're getting Shane paid. Been quiet. Well, Did you see him jumping to AEW. Only if he's been really wronged. He'd have to be really wronged. I mean, because it would this stuff would hurt their family and stuff like that. So I just don't see that stuff happening. I think it's funny that people are talking about that type of stuff, but I just don't. I can't believe Shane McMahon would go. Like there would be have to be something dastardly that happened for him to not do if, that. Not if Vince sells his rights and sells everything to Nick Khan. If he's he se- if listen, if they sold that or Disney or whatever. Then yeah, I could see, you know, that Shane would be like, "Well, I'm out of this shit. This isn't even our business anymore, or whatever." But that it would have to be something crazy like that that would have to go down for it to happen. I just, I just didn't get like I didn't watch Raw, but I saw you guys, you know, tweeting last night, especially you tweeting, uh, Joe, how yeah. they were showing the the, ter- the tag team turmoil. I was like, "Why are they showing the Lucha Brothers all of a sudden? They haven't been seen for six months." Yeah, Is we it because. And it's, it's because AEW has some guys with masks on Sunday yeah, night. It, it, it felt like that. I mean, this is classic Vince, right? They don't care about the tag team division, like, at all. And they they do this all the time. The, the tag team division's garbage, nothing, nothing. And then all of a sudden, every four months, every five months, or and maybe every eight months, I don't even know, they seem to throw this, oh, the tag team belts matter tonight only or for, like, a night. And then somebody gets the belts or, or gets the opportunity, and then that's it again for, like, six months. They focus on the character. They focus on the idea of characters on the tag team, but nobody really focuses on like matches and having good tag team matches. And Vince thinks, you know, having some tag team match thing is is oh, we, you know, we did the justice to the tag team division. And yeah, maybe it was a little bit of the response, but 
I mean, dude, what were they? What were they thinking? They think you're going to have a good comparison to that cage match that took place the other night? So I don't. It's got to so, be coincidence so or something. Bomb! Chris Elkins, what's you up? Become a shit bomb. Can't allow OJ to be top donator. Lol. Oh my God, Chris Elkins with the fifteen dollar drop. You can't allow OJ to be the top. I, I'll go <laughs> so, after Nicole again. I'll don't. I'll I'll smash Nicole to get a wallet to do, donate thirty dollars more. Chris Elkin, thank you. If you're gonna donate, do so twenty five bucks. Joe, I was in a Twitter battle with these three marks. Pretty much, they were saying that uh, WWE's tag team division was better than AEW last night. I was like, you're you just are you kidding me? They're bots, I was man. Mind blown. They're just like, they're bot. They gotta be. They're either bots or they're eleven year olds. I mean, that happens. You know what I mean? Like they can't. They, you can't really be serious. That's what I'm saying is that's what Vince McMahon's targeting is these eight to eleven year olds who's on these social medias. Like, as soon as they had a tag team tomorrow, oh my god, this tag team tomorrow is so awesome. Like, I'm just hearing that it's not awesome. I'm hearing it's just boring. <laughs> no, that's the thing though is you're arguing again with either bots or kids. So like anybody who says that, you're like, just assume. Like, the minute people start saying things like that, you just got to assume, like, okay, this is like a 10-year-old. Let him, you know, whatever. Go, okay, yeah, it's great. <laughs> like, whatever you say. I had an argument with this guy. I'm not kidding. You. He was. He said he was 30, 35, 36 right. years old. He said Kevin Ash was a pro wrestler. <laughs> well, this is, no, this is like when... Can you imagine if we went back in the day to when I liked WWF, right? And it was like Bam Bam Bigelow versus One Two Three Kid versus Aldo Montoya. Like during that time, and some guy, and I'm on Twitter, assuming there was Twitter back then, which there wasn't, but we'll pretend there was. I'm on Twitter, like, that was awesome, man. I love the one, two, three kid. That was so cool, man. That was a great match. And, you know, it was pretty good. You know, we've all remember it. It was all right. But that that's like then you as an ECW fan being like, dude, that fucking company's lame. They, they suck. And then you're like, well, you, like, no, it doesn't. Like, you're whatever, EC dumb or whatever the hell you just said is stupid so you're arguing <laughs> yeah. with that you know you're arguing with that 10 year old who's watching the awe of wwe so it's not worth it there that's okay if they like that because they're 10 it makes sense but you know more and more tw 11 12 13 14 year olds are starting to you know enjoy other things just like they did back then and there's some people with the mental capacity of a bean so like you know whatever they're just gonna they're not gonna seek out AEW, and they're gonna create this rivalry in their head you know, we don't want to hate WWE because most of us are still watching it. But when people go, oh, stop, I still see the people tweeting to this day, right now, yesterday, today, whatever. I still people see people tweeting. They're like, stop watching if you don't like it. It's like, yes, I know. This what people are doing that. They've been doing it for like nine years. They've stopped <laughs> watching. It's still happening, but it takes a while. It takes a long time to get over the drug that is WWE. That's just, you're exactly right, Joe, because you're like, I want to stop watching it, but I've been watching it since I was a kid, so it's like I don't want to stop watching. It's been yeah. there all my life. Yeah. Monday Night Raw has been there since 1995. It's been and a it's, staple. And it's not as bad as Star Trek because, like, WWE, it's like, it's there's not, like, a canon exactly. So, you know, if it's not very good or if they do some terrible stuff every week, it doesn't ruin all the past. So it's different. And that's why, like, I still watch Star Trek, the new Star Trek stuff, but I now I watch it, like, terrified by what I see. But it's like I sort I don't really like I didn't watch Discovery season three because I was like, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to watch Star Trek season three of Discovery. I'm not doing it. It's so horrible. Like and I'm easy. I like stuff that sucks sometimes. This is terrible, but it's different because it's not only is it bad, but it's spitting in the face of the canon. It's making things not make any sense to me. It's just so out there and wrong that it's it's inconceivable. Whereas Raw, listen, if it sucks then I'll be entertained to usually bitch about it. But it's been so boring that it's not really fun to even bitch about it because there's not much to say. And God knows last night I was I was dead. I was I was asleep. I was I was just out of it. And so then yeah, I decided I, I just decided to go on rants and to entertain people with weird <laughs> rants and like you know what I mean? They make it seem like my life was over like because of Raw. And I enjoyed last night, you know, but it just was nothing you could really do. I got the best part about then I got a copyright for the for the thing I played, so then uh, I'm gonna take that out. That by the way, raw review will be back um, soon as soon as I get that copyright out of there. Uh, thanks, uh, Warner Media, cocksuckers. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, what I was saying is like that. I was watching your sh show this morning when I got up from work, and 
I just saw how drained you were just watching that three hour show. You just looked like you were just dead. From you watching AEW, I can tell you're excited. Oh yeah, Jay, you're excited. When you, I see you guys watching Raw. It's just like you just want to just go to sleep while you're talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it was bad, dude. It was. You know what? You know what I was gonna do. Um, I was gonna go ahead and compare. Commit suicide. Well, that was a thought. <laughs> it was in there somewhere. But I was thinking, grab some of the clips of me towards the end of the Raw review where I look just dead to the world, and then grab some of the clips of the excitement on Sunday, <laughs> and like just keep putting the AW WWE and like Kenny putting the logo on what I look like versus each other. Cause dude, I mean, that was honest, like how bad it was. I mean, I will be a little bit honest. I'm sure I was worse because I had been up for two days straight and then three hours of raw. And then Jake couldn't be here. Now, normally I can do a review myself. I could do three hours if I'm ready to go, but I was just, it was just nothing. They gave us nothing. What are you going to do? Talk about every tag match, breaking it down. And then Xavier Woods went through the rope and that's when they got thrown into the post, the post and, then they go to commercial, right? As they come back, the crowd starts getting hot. For like, what am I going to read everything and go? It's just like stupid. I'm not doing that. Now, what was your? Yeah. Did you like anything from Raw last night? I didn't watch. <laughs> I didn't watch it. I didn't watch Raw. I didn't. I could not watch it. The well, best thing I saw was last week when Charlotte and Nia Jax had that fight. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't watch the castle. Of that. Yeah, you made the right decision not watching last night. That was rough. I mean, dude, the, I don't know why the car- I, I wonder. Um, I wonder how many other people thought the carrying cross stuff was funny. I did. I thought it was funny. Yeah, I, no, I saw. It could I saw be. That I, I just want to say that it could have been funny because I was so like the show was so bad that when that came on, that became funny, like in like a cynical way. I don't know. But what were you gonna say? No, you nailed it too. He did sound like Lars Sullivan. Yes, it just sounds like they did that character. Like Vince was like, "I need that character back. I had all these plans." He, oh my god! He, he and the thing about it, his body language, language is starting to act like him too. It's like, what am I seeing here? <laughs> now, he, now he, you know, he has been like that a little bit in NXT, but it, it definitely reminds me of Lars Sullivan. And remember what? Remember when Vince tried to make Fat Tubby guy? I forget his name. Uh, you know, Otis, they tried to make them, Otis. And they tried to do that whole storyline and then they bailed on it and then he bailed on Otis altogether. And then they did it with, um, with Nick, with Nikki, with Nikki Ash. So it's like, you know, it's like, Oh, if, if the story doesn't work on one person, he'll move it to another person. I wonder if this is the Lars story that he's been trying to tell for like three, four years. And so now he's like, okay, cool. Karrion Cross can do that. I got a bad feeling with him wearing a, you know, the, the suit and the yeah. stretch. I think the story's gonna go really left field. He might say he's coming out gay or something. I mean, oh my <laughs> god, no, not no. I'm telling, I'm, I'm tell, I'm, it might. Like, what WWE might like, should do is hire Sonny Kiss if they want to like get that at good attention because I like Sonny. Hire Sonny yeah. Kiss. Oh shit, it's turkey time. Oh. What if the turkeys a hater? Oh man. What if they? Soundwave ninety two is here. What if they killed us? Oh, I can't wait to hear this shit. Children. What if the turkeys ate us? What if they filleted us? If the turkeys ate us? If they had to hate us? Thanksgiving was a little bit different. Instead this is like a deer. This isn't a turkey. This is a deer. I don't know what I'm... They gobbled us apart But first they'd eat our nuts And then they'd eat a bud The turkeys ate us What if, what if What if the turkeys ate us Soundwave, man, thank you so much, dude, for this support, man. This guy, every day, I'm live, donates, I think. It's crazy. So does Kevin Owens being a U-bound mean we get Festival of Friendship Part 2 Electric Boogaloo with Jericho, or do we get Mount Rushmore with the Bucks and Adam Cole? 
Interesting development, but how many people can AU sign Jesus Christ? Oh, man, you know what I would do? You know what I would do if I was AEW? I would, um, what would you do, I wonder? I, I, I almost want Jericho to, um, to announce, like Jericho to announce that he's uh, bringing out an old friend and it's Kevin or, or, or something like that. You know, Jericho is going to introduce a new friend in the AEW and he's the one who got the contract signed and the deal made and he can say stuff like, we we were friends, then we kind of had a falling out, but then we really mended it up in the end there. And there's a guy out there that I've helped bring to AEW, and the crowd's cheering, and everybody's happy. And Jericho brings out Kevin, and it'd be great if Kevin came out and they shared this moment thing, and they're like, now we're going to take over the world. We might even form a tag team and become the tag team champions. It's something I've always wanted to do. I talked to Kevin about it. He wants to do it. And then Kevin kicks him in the balls and then fucking stuns him or something. And now Kevin is revealed to be in All Elite. And uh, he turns on Jericho, who just got him signed. Thanks for the contract, bitch. Like that type of thing. Oh, uh, I love something like that. I think I think it'd be really good to see like Kevin Steen, like you said, Jericho to bring him in. I think Kevin Steen versus you know maybe I don't know Adam Cole or something. His first match that'd be awesome to see. Really oh, good yeah. to see. You got pretty really strong. I think Kevin Owens with Jericho makes it really good too because you can actually split Jericho away from. You know what he's doing now. Take right. him away from the group. Get him with Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens could be viable to AEW. Very viable. He could be the bridge, ROH coming to that clo- that door. He's real good friends with the owner. Real well, the, the, the thing that's we'll see. That's why like the big shows there and stuff like that. People like the big show yeah. are there to be that like bridge that can be like, oh, I'll tell I'll tell everybody about this. You know, I can talk <laughs> to people over here for you. You know, there's a lot of people like that, dude. They 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 went out like Mark Henry. Those people are all bridge builders. Oh, we got another Matrix. Oh my God, we got another interruption from the Matrix. It's coming in again. Mm. Thursday, the trailer releases. This is the moment. This looks like the last we one we need saw. To show maybe show us what is real. Maybe not though. Maybe it's different. No, it's different. It's a different. Right now, you believe it's 9:51 p.m. Oh my God, it knows the time again. But that couldn't be further from the truth. Could be. This is the first day of the rest of your life. Oh man, that was crazy. You, want it. you gotta fight for it. I love it. Neo, uh, Neo looks Neo going full John Wick. Perfect. Man, I love John Wick. I love that movie. Uh, uh, listen. What was that uh, villain? The second Matrix movie, where the the highway chase. Yeah, you know, I you know you know what pisses me off though that highway chase, uh, like that music is still fucking stuck in my brain, dude. Like, <laughs> like dude, dude, that's the that's the music in the scene. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Fucking dude, like when I hear that, I like I just immediately know the mute. Like that's so enraged because it goes on forever. I remember being in the theater. I'm like, Jesus Christ, it's still going. Anna, the Anna, the Anna, the Anna, 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 the Anna. It's like, um, where where is it? I bet you we pull it up right now. That's like it's right on that. Like it's just so ridiculous. Oh yeah, here it comes. Where is it? Here it is. Here it is. Fucking nano, 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 nano. There it is. Nano, 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 nano. It's a great, it's great though. I do like it. It's great stuff. I and listen, I'm a big industrial guy. Some of the music's in in the Matrix is more techno. It's not really like, you know. Isn't K? Was it K L M F D? What was that? There's another band that's like that. Uh, there's a whole the first the first soundtrack is first of all the score is great. I love the score, but then there's like Rage Against the Machine, Marilyn Manson, you know, minute, you know, uh, who was the other one? There's some other people that not the the metal slash industrial band. I it was a Ministry. I think Ministry was on it. The first Deftones and stuff like that. You know, it had a we were kind of just coming out of that. We were in the new metal phase, but they were trying to get get the most out of the. It was kind of more techno meets new metal y meets 
alternative uh, soundtrack. I don't know, but it was Static X. Yeah, stuff like that was on there. I I remember, dude. I remember. I Jesus. I can smell the summer. I can smell the year 1999 and 2000 and shit like that when The Matrix was out. And that CD, I remember I cracked it. It was like blue. It had a blue cover. And I <laughs> fucking cracked the CD by accident, obviously. And I had to buy it again. Donation coming in. Uh, JY, thank you. As opposed to KY, which is my favorite jelly to use. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for that. Dude, remember when they had the KY Jelly Wrestling match in old school? Did you ever see? Remember that movie? And you yes, were like, yes. I was like, dude, dude. I, like, I want to do that. If I do, what's my name? Oh my God, Broken Lion! You want creamy goodness? I'm your friend. Say hello to my chocolate blend. Whoa. I would love if Kevin goes to AU. Honestly, if the stories and matches are great, I don't give a poop emoji. Okay. Yeah, I, I, yeah, just, I mean, here's what I'm worried about. I'm worried that the rest of our existence is, oh, who's going to go there now? Like, 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 that's not, if, you know, if all we care, if all people always care about is like, who's going to go there, jump ship, who's going to, you know, then like, I, I'm getting to the point where it's like, I, I want to settle down with the waiting for someone to come thing to go on. You know, I kind of just want to watch their shows be good. You know, and then yeah, I want to see it develop. I want to see it develop a little bit. I want to see where this Adam Coe and Daniel Bri Brian Danielson storyline goes. I want to see how they get the younger roster better. Now that you got Kevin Steen, maybe be on. Now I'm like with you, almost like with Bray Wyatt. I'm like, man, I can't wait to see them come. I kind of, I want to jump ahead. <laughs> I'm not waiting no more. Build right. that women's division. I mean, it's good and all, but. Yeah, um, no, the women's division is way better now. Like, on paper, is way better now. Now they just have to make sure that they book it right. That's the only thing, because their women... The AEW women's division was not very good, and it's gotten way better on paper. So hopefully the matches can deliver, because on paper it looks way better now. And Soundwave92 is the new top dog. Thank you, Soundwave. You we beast. Don't know where, if we don't know where if Paige has come back to WWE or she's going to AEW, because she says she's not done yet. Well, where's, she's, where's that going? I mean, she, I mean, she's teasing a comeback, but I mean, I don't know where. And I mean, you know, Daniel Bryan said it the other day that one of the things is Vince was very protective. So Vince yeah, is like, he's like, he, Vince is actually worried about people being hurt. Like, he's actually worried, like, hey, you know, take it easy. We don't have to do too much stuff with you. You know, he's actually worried about people, maybe, or maybe he's just worried about lawsuits or the whole Chris Benoit thing. You know, I think has changed Vince's. I think it changed his mindset. I mean, right. listen, he, listen, he's responsible for all these people. So I'm sure there's some people out there that says Vince doesn't give a shit, but they do. Because even Mick Foley, you know, I mean, he he did not want Mick Foley to do some of that stuff, and the wrestlers talked him into a lot of things. And now that it's years later and some people have done what they've done, Vince is like, man, this is on me. And I think he genuinely is overprotective now of people because he's seen shit that happened. I didn't get, he get like, really. Didn't they get sued over Chris Benoit's thing with their family? I don't know. Uh, I think so. I don't. Bad. They might have sued them over the news. I think maybe, or I don't. I'm not sure though. I don't know. Over, I think they sued him over because the Monday they were like, he was like, "Oh my God, they, he, they missed him so much." And it came out that he killed his family, so they had to scrap everything the next day. I'm not sure. They someone was on TV. Someone else would have to tell me or remind me about that. I don't remember. Yeah, that, the raw ratings don't come out till tomorrow, Labor Day. Okay, Labor we Day. don't have the raw ratings. Okay, because everybody was talking about that, and I'm like, wait, I missed the rating. What yeah, is it? It's a 24 hour wait. So Wednesday we get them. I'm betting we they're not that much. In. They're they're probably not that good. They're probably still one eight one nine one eight. Probably I'm getting. I'm going one eight. I think, think Rampage six hundred thousand. Let me see that. I think six hundred thousand for Rampage. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not good, but still. Above their expectations for what they wanted in that time slot, but I don't know. To me, it's like he didn't go to Saturday night at eight o'clock. Well, that they don't be see. That's the thing is they don't want to go because the whole point is the network said this is the time we'll put you in because almost anything else we have is gonna have a better um, is gonna have better ratings. But one thing that could do somewhat well in that time slot could be wrestling. So, and, and a show that doesn't necessarily continue in a series and not a repeat of something 
because a repeat and things like that in that time slot usually do about you know three hundred thousand, three four hundred thousand. So for AEW to be doing six hundred thousand, they're above just about anything you could put in that time slot. So, I mean, you're right because TNT did tweet out that this was the highest rated month they had for Friday night at 10 yep, o'clock. Exactly right. That's their strategy. So that's why when people say, when you hear somebody say, you know what they should do is those move it to this night, they don't want to. They this this show will do the best ratings for TNT at that time in that time slot. Now, would AEW have better ratings if they moved it to Wednesday or if they moved it to Tuesday or Monday or whatever? Yeah, but TNT already has shows those times with better ratings than AEW would do. So they don't want to do that. But what they did have was that Friday time slot. So it's a bone it's a little dude, it's a little boost for the network. The network goes, "Hey, Friday nights for 1 hour, we get 200,000 extra views than we used to get at that time." Two, four, six, eight, that's 800,000 to a million. So they get 800,000 to a million more views now a month, and they can put that in their metrics category and sell more ads. So that's how they see it. And the thing about it is they're probably going to get a big contract because they go to, what, TBS in January? I think their highest-rated show gets about 700,000. They're about to get a million-plus show coming to January to TBS. They're going to get a big contract. Right. Yeah. And listen, if something came along tomorrow that was doing one one million or one point two million views, I mean, they would bump AEW. They'd be like, all right, get rid of that show and put this on. So, you know, that that would happen. That's the thing, too. Yeah. Yeah. So you just have to see what what goes on with that. Joe, me, and Ryan the Heel are watching NXT, and they did a weird Vince Buckle party segment, and they're going to be wedding next week. Vice is already ruining NXT. Joe, me, and Ryan the Heel are watching NXT, and they did a weird Vince bachelor party. What? Vince bachelor party segment? And they're going to be a wedding next week? Did you say Vince? Uh, the, remember when Vince had that bachelor party when he was getting ready to get married to, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, dang, uh. Uh, she's the great one of the. She was the women's champion. They had a, a thing. I'm like, my mind has blown. Like, I'm trying to remember her name. That he was getting ready to get married to her. He had a big old affair with her and oh, loved her. Man. I'm trying to remember her name. And they had that bachelor party. And they had, they were in a limo. They did all that. They did that for Drexler Loomis. That's that's man. What the hell, dude? I don't. I don't. I don't get. I that? mean, I guess I gotta watch that. That sounds ridiculous. <laughs> like I don't know. He had. It was back when. Uh, dang, what's that woman? Uh, she. Um, this is gonna blow your mind because I went blank minded. She's one of the best women's wrestlers in the uh, Attitude Era. She was huge. All right. Uh, not Tori Wilson. Not China. Not, not Tori. It's the blonde hair. Like not she's to- from Canada. Oh, oh Trish Stratus. Stratus. He got. He was getting ready to get married to her. Remember? He's oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Limo, then they went to that little club and they gave him a bachelor party. Okay. Oh, oh yeah, God. and she kind of like got on him, and so, he was sitting on the chair. Yeah, that, was, that was so cringe. That was very cringe. <laughs> that is funny. I I mean, I, but wait a minute. But Vince wasn't there, right? This was their own version of it in NXT. No, the, yeah, that was a uh, Dexter Loomis. See, like if you like, I thought they were saying that Vince was there. I was like, oh, this I gotta watch NXT. Vince was at a bachelor party, and now, <laughs> like, oh no, oh it's okay. Just rehashed the story, the WWE story, to them. Oh, see, but like that's really has their stories now. That's not good. So right. I'm saying, like, you already if you're seeing what they're what, what I saw on Twitter, it looks like they're showing people. I didn't even see Tommaso Champ in a while. Uh-huh. I haven't seen Johnny Gargano in a while. Where are they going? He's having his first kid. That's why. Uh, Who Gargano's having his kid? Having a kid? Yeah. Having, they can't get rid of his wife, but they can get rid of him. They cut him. Cut him. You think so? Oh, yeah, they'll cut him. That's Triple H's guy. They want to diminish Triple H. He did not defeat AEW. Yeah. They're going to diminish him. They're going to get rid of his two top guys that he loves. But he should just get out of there. He should just be like, you know what, dude? I'm leaving. Fuck this. And if they cut them two, they're going to cut the legs out of NXT because that's why a lot of fans still watch. Right. 300,000 fans still watch that because of Johnny Argento and Tommaso Ciampa. If you can drop them, you're dropping 300,000 fans. Guaranteed. Right. And you're going to be live tomorrow or Friday with NXT cuts. I see it. 
Yeah, I'll be in the middle of the day. I'll be breaking news like everybody's gone. I mean, who are they going to have on the show, though, then? They could cut 20 rounds. Uh, they will have all these uh, freaking basketball. They've signed all these basketball players. They signed uh, Gable Stevenson to an NXT contract. That's uh-huh. what they're signing right now. Some of these athletes that we don't, that is, it's like Omos. That's what we're about ready to see, a bunch of Omos in NXT. Oh, my God, yeah. Well, did you hear the crowd? See, that I'm worried, too, because the other night in Miami, that crowd kind of, like, started popping a bit for the almost Bobby Lashley hookup. And it's like, ooh, man, you know, they're going to, like, now they're going to be like, ooh, almost has all this fire. Like, ooh, like, they're getting all <laughs> excited yeah. about that. So, yeah, I'm a little he concerned cannot, about that. He cannot move. He's like the great Kali. It's a horrible. I think he's better than the Kali, but it's, I think that, but I, I know you know, I get it. Let me I know see. this. I don't want to see Big Show in a ring again. He couldn't move either. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. He's a Shit mess. bomb. He's a mess. I almost feel like AU needs one more championship or something. They have no. so much great talent, and it might help elevate some of the other guys. I don't know. Maybe I'm just brainwashed from decades of WWE. I have Stockholm Syndrome for Vinnie Mac. I, Shardy Janetti, thanks for becoming a $5 ship bomb. I would say... A, a hardcore belt, maybe, or a, or like I I don't think a light heavyweight belt because everybody's like so different. But I, maybe, trios championship, yeah, yeah, trios. yeah maybe trios. six man tag trios title. Look all the factions they got. I just why say why would they have them? instead of having the trios though, I would just make why not just make the tag belts like the tri- like you can have trio matches for the tag belts as long as it's a tag match, it, the tag belts can be on the line. I mean, why not just do that and then you can have a hardcore or lightweight title. That way you can do that. But if you had a trios title, you can't add another one after that. Somebody brought that up too, Joe, the other day on Twitter. They said, I'm surprised we haven't seen more storylines. Remember when Shawn Michaels was in that tag team match and he put his WWE championship on the line when he had Psycho Sid as his partner? Right. They were facing their heart, and I think somebody else ended up. World title was on the line in a tag team match. That was pretty interesting. I remember that dilemma that it was like maybe 96, 95 when that happened. Yeah. Yo, Tom. That was let me see if Tom's mic's working real quick as I uh, fix my thing here. I'm going to fix my mic and going to go for a minute. Tom, you there? Is it wet? Are we getting weird? No? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, yeah, baby. What's up? Hey, what's up? What's up, Ryback? <laughs> <laughs> what's going on? I think I just sent you an invite by accident. How you doing, Tom? What do you got? What are you thinking about tonight? What is going on? Just got done watching NXT. Oh, yeah, what happened? Pretty good show. I didn't see it at all. I, haven't, I probably I might watch later, potentially, you know. I don't know. What do you think about Owens going to AEW? You want to see that, or you want to see him go somewhere else? I would, I would love for him to go to AEW. Everybody wants him to go to AEW. Would you like would you like to get hepatitis C? What do you think about <laughs> hepatitis C? Triple H. What E-W about AEW is Yeah, go ahead. AEW is becoming the destination for pro wrestling. That's the scary thing. Like everybody wants to go there. Are they gonna oversaturate? They look it? happy. They look happy. Every yeah. time they go Yeah, they love it. Um, that's what Ruby Riot already tweeted that out too. She said, "I'm so happy I found this place. I'm so mentally refreshed." Like, already, she's tweeted that, tweeted it out. Then she gets lost in the shuffle. <laughs> oh no! Yeah. I mean, she's gonna. You think about it. It can actually, you know, Ruby Riot, you know, what uh, Chris Tatlander, uh-huh. Thunder Rosa, Britt Baker. They got the full horsemen of the women's division right there in AEW. They can build these other women up right there. Hmm. You got them. Got yeah, two big, big, big horsemen. Yeah. That up. And that the Ruby Riot is going to be the bridge because Sarah Logan was there backstage Sunday night. Yep. So you know she's going to bring her in. You she's go. going to be like, do you know she's how gonna... great it is here? You got to come over here. You don't know how great it is here. She was I loved backstage with the women. She was loved. That's what I'm saying. Liv Morgan probably going to jump. She's going to jump ship. They're not doing that with her. She's going to jump. Hmm. She was loved, and then women were like infatuated with. She she won the, They're like, oh my gosh, she won she won the battle royal on her first night. Right. And she got 
Liv Morgan actually, I think, tweeted out and I think she deleted. She put out one night. <laughs> she she became a star, <laughs> and then she deleted it. <laughs> well, I, I I like, like it's like I like the girls all together, the Riot Squad together. They were fun and everything, but Liv Morgan, like, ugh. Like, I don't know. Like, what is she... You know, I, I'm happy... I, that's why I was happy about Ruby Riot going there. Because Ruby Riot is good. I like... She does everything right. I'm not excited about all these women coming... You know, they've already got a bunch of women who are like, hee hee, and they can't really wrestle. But at least, like, half of them can, or a, qu a quarter of them can. And so that's what I'm excited about. I don't care. I hope those other women, they, they stay in WWE or they go somewhere else where they can make money, but... Shit, I think, the, I don't think we need him in AEW. You become uh, Black Pumpkinhead. Shit bomb. What's up? NXT was terrible. Besides Io Shirai, should go AEW. Should go to AEW. Yeah, yeah. Io Shirai in in AEW would be fine. That's cool. I mean, the biggest the biggest signee they ever signed was Thunder Rosa because she can train them women. She yeah. loves training. I'm telling you, that was the biggest signing. She people. She's good in the ring too. Like that's just what I just oh want to see her. I'm so happy to see her in the ring. Like she's so much better. Her, her and Deeb, her Deeb, Britt Baker, and a couple other of the women now. Now there's you know Statlander did a good job in that match the other week. So now we got a group of people that can do things. Oh, they got the four. Oh. All right, baby. Um, well, uh, let me see here. What am I doing? Oh yeah, let me go back to the dono. Uh, da 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 da. Let's see. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, it is a false Kenny Omega bomb. I had to replay a super chat, so don't get excited too excited. It's uh, but let's get excited because I like this song. I want you to jam me. It's uh, J Rod with four ninety nine. We'll pretend it's four hundred and ninety nine. <laughs> It's like disappearing into the Matrix picture in the Neo's head. What's up, J-Rod? Hey, Joe Buccaneers versus Cowboys. Who is going to win this Thursday? Um, Buccaneers versus Cowboys. Buccaneers, I'm sorry. Sorry, Cowboys fans. Gotta go Tampa Bay. Are you serious? Um, thank you, though, for the four ninety nine. Yeah, whenever I replay a Super Chat, for some reason it's been defaulting to the Omega Bomb. Uh, don't know. So I don't know if we're going to get another one of those in a minute, but hopefully not because it's too long for four, $4. But it is nice to see Omega shove that flag in somebody's ass. Can we see that recreate? And look, oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> Kevin Owens' face just comes out of nowhere. <laughs> look yeah, inside of him. Holy shit. Um, let's see here. So that was, that was J-Rod. Let me see here. There's a couple others. Hopefully this... We might end up doing it all night, though. Let me see. Harry, Steve. Shardy Janae said, I almost feel like AW needs another championship. Okay, we had that one earlier. We got that one, so that's good. Broken Lions. We got Broken Lions. So it uh, looks like uh, we're going to go to Harry, Steve here. Shit bomb. There we go. Who watches Oz Review here? It's pretty fucked up that I get pretty amped for Oz Review three blokes from Ireland and anything that WWE does nowadays, and that's sad. Yeah, I agree, man. That's uh, it's it's sad that what up, Harry, Steve. Thank you for the donation. It's sad that people's like reviews, podcasts, like listening to Jim Cornette shit on something, or listening to anybody shit on something, or be upset, or or the reaction, like that. It's the dude, but this is the that was the reason why I started doing this, like myself, because I was like, okay, when the Bruins suck, when hockey sucks, when Red Sox suck, when the sports teams suck, I. All I want to do is call the sports station and bitch for, for for hours about what are they doing with the team? Why'd the manager do this? What's going on? And criticize the whole thing. And so that's why I made this. And, like, that was in 2012. And, you know, I think a lot of people are like that. That's why everybody does so well on here, no matter who you are, what reviewer, or whoever you listen to, or whatever the case is. People want somewhere to go to be like, I'm mad. Are these people mad? Are they mad about the same thing? Like, they want to connect because they you, you watch this and you feel fucking am i am i retarded or is this as bad as i think i'm upset about it you know so that's it's clear as day why 
you watch these reviews and why I'm here and why everybody else is uh is here and why we do why we do this. I don't know. It's, to me, it's pretty clear. What's up, Smoke? What's um? Let's see here. Go with Tampa Bay too. Yeah, I think a lot of people are gonna go with Tampa Bay. Does Joe need yeah. to take a shot now? No, because it was only four dollars. I don't need to take a shot. It was a hundred dollars. Then I would take a shot. It was only four dollars. It was exciting though, but it was it was four dollars. Let's you know. Soundwave ninety two is still in the top dono, and it says nine dollars. I'm sorry, I didn't. Let me fix that. Soundwave ninety two, with oh, I wrote ninety two. Wow, I'm dyslexic. I wrote ninety two, but then instead of twenty nine after that, I wrote ninety two, because I'm like fucking dyslexic. Uh, thank you, Soundwave. So yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. I'm. I'm focused on being excited about AEW tomorrow night and then Thursday night for the Matrix trailer because I'm a dork and I like the Matrix movies. And, um, yeah, my, my son had his first day of school today, so I was excited about that. So I woke up to, like, take pictures of him and, and whatever else. But then I'd only slept, like, five hours. So then I was, like, not awake yet, right? So I went back to sleep, and then I just passed out and slept for a while. So I I did get a full sleep, but... Unfortunately, I, did, I got nothing done in the day, but I guess I needed to sleep because I hadn't slept in two days. So I guess. Oh I my gosh, Joe! You gotta see this. I What's just up? Tweet you. Oh, let WWE, me go look on Twitter. Yeah, WWE has uh, contracted with Netflix for a movie called Escape the Undertaker with a new day in the Undertaker in it. <laughs> oh my God! You what the <laughs> hell is this? It looks like a. Ah! Oh my God, <laughs> Harry Steve! Thank you, Harry Steve. What is this? What like the hell movie. is this? It looks like a, a Disney movie. An interactive <laughs> dub. <laughs> <laughs> no! Oh my God, this is real. It's real. Oh my God, I'm gonna pass out. A cover of it. What it's is? A horror film. <laughs> oh my God, this is not real, guys. <laughs> Oh my god, no, this is real. <laughs> oh my god, this looks It looks so bad. Oh my god. I see you've come to the interactive <laughs> Netflix DVD. Oh my god, dude, an interact okay, wait a minute. <laughs> an interactive WWE horror movie called Escape the Undertaker, featuring <laughs> The Undertaker and the New Day, is coming to Netflix October fifth. In the movie, Taker has set a trap for the New Day at his <laughs> mansion. <laughs> <laughs> Which is an extreme haunted house as opposed to a regular haunted house. It's an extreme haunted house full of supernatural challenges. <laughs> oh, my God. This looks like so Nickelodeon Disney. Oh, oh my God, dude. <laughs> I'm going to get high and watch this and play this. <laughs> Can you, oh, my God. This is this blows the Matrix thing away. Whoever came up with this concept, what were they smoking? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe this was the whole thing Nick Khan was talking about, the Marvel Universe. <laughs> like this. Yes. Here we go. This it's... One... Oh my god, dude. <laughs> Tales from the Hood said King 88 in the chat. <laughs> da, da, da. Oh my god, this is way this too is funny. National, this could be National Lampoon's movie right es here. Or <laughs> Escape or the. No, this is like Star Trek The Ride or whatever. <laughs> when you go down to Las Vegas and they're like, Captain, the shields are up, and everybody's like, oh my god, cadets, we're going to need you to tell us how to use the turbo lift. Now you're all lieutenants or whatever. And it's just lame, but like it's, you're a dork and you're there. That's what this is. Escape the Undertaker. I will kill everyone in this mansion and rape your families. NXT. <laughs> NXT was terrible, yeah. Black Pumpkinhead, thank you for the donation. There is a brand new $25 uh, donation for the new people that don't know about that. Rostafa, what's up? He wants him to go to AEW. Yeah, basically that won the poll tonight. And speaking of polls, the Matrix poll is uh, still rolling here. 413 votes. 46% of you are going to watch the trailer Thursday for the Matrix. 34% of you say no, and 19% say maybe. So there's a chance that at least half of you will see the trailer for the Matrix Thursday. So that's cool. Um I guess, you know, I mean, maybe it will suck, though. Maybe the movie's going to be a, a woke piece of trash, and, it, you know, 
it'll be another one of those things where you pretend it doesn't exist, which would be terrible. But I do that with uh, Picard uh, myself because it's just so horrific. Let's bring in Rostafa real quick. He's uh, He's been waiting for days. What's up, Rostafa? Nope, we lost him. Oh, my God. De uh, Joe, I'm, Yo. I'm, reading some, I'm reading some news that somebody just put on Twitter. That, just think, Logan Paul is, you know, with Kevin Owens, they're battling. What about if Logan Paul beats Kevin Owens and that's his last match? To be I can see him doing Paul. it. Yeah, just to make fun of me. He goes out. Maybe, maybe. maybe it's they... WWE right there in a nutshell. Maybe I mean if they want I guess if they wanted to make themselves look worse or put over Logan Paul I mean they're, at least they're doing with Logan Paul which is like what I was hoping which was like hey you know make this guy heal like the people hate him like just make him a fucking heal It'd be great and they did I thought he was gonna be with the Miz though but okay he's with the other he, who, who was he with he was with someone else uh, he's with uh he's with uh uh Baron Corbin. Oh yeah, yeah. So they were like, uh, yeah. I, I, so I guess they were like, okay, we. Which I don't get, Joe. They showed on the bump that Logan Paul didn't like Baron Corbin, and he was making fun of him. The next week, they're buddies. Like what? <laughs> it's well, WWE. Nothing makes sense. Yeah, but well, that's even funnier though. That's even more funny. Like they, he was making fun of him when he was poor, but now he's rich, so now he's cool. That's like oh, the yeah. ultimate. That's the ultimate douchey thing to do. So that's that's that actually. That's actually genius. That's that, that's actually what would happen. Think about all the douchey people out there. They're always like, think about like uh, people that used to be here. People are like, oh, this guy's a shithead. But then the minute they hate me, then people are like, I like him now. You know, it's, it's what happens. So Logan Paul, that makes sense. Logan Paul's like, yo, this guy's a loser. He's poor. Ha <laughs> ha. And then the guy's rich. And now Logan Paul's like, oh, shit, you're the shit. You know, and, and yeah, it's wrestling. So who cares anyway? But yeah, they, they, all, they were trying to make him a face. They're trying to just, I, I, you know, be like, oh, this guy's got a big thing. He were celebrities. And obviously they went in the back and Logan was like, I bet you he came back and was like, man, they don't like me. Should have made me a bad guy. And then they were like, well, do you want to be a bad guy? And he was like, yeah, that'd be cool. We should do that. And then they all agreed, probably just all agreed. Yeah, yeah, let's bring you out as, as a heel now. Um, but instead of working with The Miz, like I thought, it's they're like, we really need someone to help with, you know, Corbin. He's a big douche and it makes sense. Oh. So. My gosh, Joe! What happened now? What every three minutes you go? Oh my God! Like what happened this time? Somebody, somebody tweeted out the pictures of the bachelor party. I'm gonna I'm retweet them. Oh yeah. They were acting like zombies. Oh no. Yes. No, no, that's not the full context. Okay. Okay. It's a zombie referee. Joe, you will enjoy that bachelor party. Okay, I'm gonna watch that. Okay. I see the referee already doing like some kind of crazy pose, but he's just messing around. It's comedic gold. Jake, uh, no, Drake Maverick is looking uh, looking fine with that blueberry suit there. I like how they're all dressed up, but the one big guy in the back left with the tie dye, he's just like, "Fuck this, Jerry Garcia." I'm going Jerry Garcia. Although I guess they're all dressed differently, but. They tag you in the pictures. Yeah, he was, he was like, yo, Jerry Garcia, man. I love the ice cream. I'm going to throw that tie-dye on. Everybody else, you dress up. And the referee, of course, is just the referee. He's not dressed at all. He's just, I'm just dressed like referee. I'm always I'm always a referee, and that's about it. And Yeah. Did I hear right that Jeff Hardy was chasing the 24-7 title last night? Yes. Yes. Oh, my God. Yeah, that actually, that made... That that trended so much today that I almost did a video on it earlier because everybody, man, I don't know what it was, but that everyone got mad about that today. That was like one of the top headlines was like people were mad about Jeff Hardy chasing for the uh, 24-7 belt. They actually were angry about it, which I get, but yeah, this does he, look kind of funny. Just release him. Just release him. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, they don't, I don't know. I don't know. They should. I mean, that way, that way, when he runs someone over, it'll be an AW. <laughs> we'll be, hey, we didn't do it, you know. But um, yeah, between him and the Usos, it's a gamble every night. I can, you know what? Yeah. The, you know what I'm surprised about? And listen, listen, everybody makes mistakes, whatever the case is. But I'm surprised the WWE hasn't like because they're so crazy. I'm surprised that eight uh, the WWE hasn't been like, yeah, you're not allowed to drive to the shows anymore. Like, or some, you know, like at that, because what is it, two or three incidents now between 
each one, you know, like a total of five or six incidents while working for the company or whatever it is between the Hardy and the Uso. So I'm just, I'm not saying that they should do this and maybe it's illegal. I don't know, but I'm just saying I'm surprised that WWE has been like, yeah, you can, uh, you won't, yeah, you don't drive anymore. But <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I mean, just think about it. I mean, Uso's got in trouble, but who they punish? Naomi. You didn't see her on TV for almost four months. Yeah, right, because they couldn't punish. Well, maybe they do blame her. Maybe they did say that. Maybe they said, Na- yeah, you better keep him intact. Maybe he was going to be in trouble, and Naomi was like, please, like, don't do that to him. I'll I'll, I'll drive from now on. I'll take, take care punishment. of him. Ma- I mean, I, maybe that's what happened. I don't know, but also she kind of just, she's kind of fizzled out, though, and she was injured, too, a little. I think a little while back, but I don't know. Uh, another report came out from Ringside News that Tessa Blanchard is nuclear to AEW NWE. They don't want her. No, neither company wants it. Oh yeah, yep. I I heard that you know AEW said that fifty. Per, it's like fifty percent of the people are like, yeah, come on in, and the other fifty percent are like, don't want her. In fact, the funny thing about that is the other night, uh, I think it was like a week ago or two weeks ago. No, no, it was at uh, at all out. It was at all out. I don't know if anybody heard this. I think people did. It was. I think it was reported on. Um, there were people in the uh, crowd chanting for tessa blanchard and they were saying we want tessa or, or something like that and the other part of the crowd started chanting no we don't so even even the fans were like s- like split on the whole thing just the same she, way that the that the company is you think she comes out and apologizes that maybe they re- you know let her be or i think she just needs to apologize admit what she did and just I think she did. I I mean, I think she did. I mean, dude, you even had Big Swole, you know, who at first when Tessa got in trouble for this or the rumors came out or people called her out for things or whatever the case is, you know, Big Swole even kind of crapped on her a little bit and people said blah, blah, blah. But then after that, recently, when it was rumored that Tessa might go to AEW, Big Swole was on Twitter welcoming her, saying like, you know, and people were like, how can you say this after you said whatever? And she's like, everybody deserves a second chance, and she's, you know, whatever. So I was like, okay, wait, Big Swole's on board with her coming, so that's interesting. But now it's being told that, you know, half the, the lot, everybody's split on her coming, you know, between what people say about her from NXT and WWE to, uh, you know, AEW. And so I don't know, man. Might He's be- not going to come to AEW unless they get like a 90% yay because they are so family ordinate, ordinate that they're not going to let that happen. I'd bring her in as a heel if I was going to bring her in. And I'd make, you know, they're going to make sure the locker room's cool with it. And she probably would have a shorter, shorter contract. Maybe she could go to Impact. Well, they got rid yeah. of her, though. They got rid of her. Remember? They, they fired her. Yeah, they did fire her because she wouldn't show up. She wouldn't show up to defend the belt or whatever. She and wouldn't lose the title. She wouldn't drop the title. She wouldn't do it. Yeah. They had a fire. So that's not good. That's a problem. <laughs> like she's... Oh, you got Ring of Honor, maybe? Maybe they take her in? Maybe Ring of Honor, yep. Maybe Ring of Honor. But she's... Uh... About MLW? Do they have one? Man. She's running out of, I mean, options kind of here. I mean... WA. They'll take her in. They'd probably take her at NWA. Cause That's a smaller crowd. So you could actually, like, off well, the blow for her to get in there. I, I don't know, though, the thought. I don't know how bad this, like, I don't know the story of her. I don't know how bad her apparent personality is that, that she can't, you know, make it places or get into stuff. I don't know how. I think what, it made it worse for Joe when it came out, and then all of a sudden she wouldn't do the job for Impact. Like, you made it look Really yeah. bad. It made it look like she really said what she said. <laughs> yeah, the the problem is, like you just said, like they by not showing up to impact or not defending that belt or not looking good there, it's like you just helped you kind of confirmed everything people say about you. Like that's the problem. If she had kept defending the belt, looked good and whatever else, you know, she would it would have been like, Well, she was fine in impact and no one really had a problem, you know. I mean, like you know, maybe give her a try. But now it's like, okay, all these rumors about her being difficult, being a bitch, and all these other things being whatever they said, racist, all these other things. And fine, you know, that's hearsay, this, that, and the other thing. But now you've got this big example of her being like, fuck that, I ain't dropping this belt. I ain't doing this shit. And then they fire her. And it's like, well, that's another thing now to add to the to the wall. 
Hey, just to ask you a question, Joe, it's almost like this. Since your podcast, just say if I had her on my, no, just say she was on my podcast and it made my podcast go 150, then she said something like really racist and then she wouldn't show back from up to my podcast. Would you pick her up for a podcast for you, like to grow your chat? Well, it's almost like that. So, like, it, like <laughs> she goes on your podcast and says, I don't like wrestling this type of person, they smell. Yeah, it's almost like, and, and then you, you and then you said, "Wait, whoa, wait a minute!" Like, did you just say that blank people smell? And then she's like, "Yeah, like I just, you know, it's 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 listen, it's I'm not trying to make anybody upset. It's just how I, it's I've come to notice that." And then people are like, "Oh my god, like what the fuck?" And then everyone's going crazy saying that she, she's like a crazy racist person. Um, I, that I don't know. Like I might bring her on to ask her about it to be like, what you really give me the example of who smells, you know, I might actually like dive into it. But if she said something like, I refuse to wrestle anybody who's not white because I don't, because they're, and then she said like N word or expletive or something like that. And I was like, is this a character you're doing right now? And this is a word, <laughs> you know, like, like, I mean, like, I probably wouldn't have her on if she was for real. If it wasn't like, are you doing a racist gimmick? Is that what's going on? This is, can't be a gimmick. And uh, you know, I if you said that to her on your podcast and she was like, "No, I really don't fucking like this and I don't care if people don't like it or whatever." And then you were like, "How are you going to get booked if you're openly like you're a uh, racist? Like what the hell?" And she's like, "Yeah, I fucking am." And fuck that. Like I wouldn't yeah, I wouldn't have her on my show. If I if she was really like, serious, like if she was serious, like I'd be like, "What the fuck?" What do you like? I'm not gonna interview Hitler. You know what I mean? So I, I so say that's where WWE and AEW is at. Like you don't know what her true character is. You don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I just know some stories of overseas. But the you know what the problem is is because of all the fake stories and the soft ass people out there. It's like, is she really this bad, or is this just people being soft as shit and being butt hurt, and she's not that bad? And why did Big Swole defend her? Big Swole came out and defended her and was like, I'll welcome her into the company. Like, listen, she made she was rough on some people, but I don't think she's really a race a bad person. So, like, in my opinion, like, okay, well, if Big Swole is like that, you know, then she can't be that bad. If she really was that bad, Big Swole and people like that would be like, fuck her, no. You know, like it wouldn't there's no way you would if you really believe that would want her there. But if you thought maybe she said some fucked up shit sometimes. You know, but but she's really not like that. Well, you would be like, all right, she can, whatever, let her let her come in. You know, so I just don't understand. I'm not sure. I don't know enough think, about what happened. I think we would solve this problem if they left her alone in a room with Xavier Woods. What? If they left her in a room alone with Xavier Woods and filmed it. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Well, we already know Xavier likes the uh, snow bunnies. So, what a badass! Hey, Joe. Yeah. Yo. Well, you can't really take what Big Wall says seriously when her husband is Cedric Alexander, who trained with Tessa Blanchard. Oh. Oh. Didn't know that. That's crazy. Are you serious? That, that, yeah. That that, that change it. Wow. It might have been lay off her. So Tessa Blanchard's friends with Cedric, you think? They used to train together. So like, so to me that tells me like, listen, th you think she's training with a black guy and is really racist or is she just talking mad shit? Like is she just she could just be a shithead. Like that could just be it. She's just kind of a grumpy shithead. If she's just a grumpy shithead, I'd hire her. Hire more grumpy shitheads. We need more douchebags in this business. We got too many fucking, hey, guys, want to play video games? Ah! Like, we know we need some more people that are crazy. Like, I don't want someone that's going to destroy the locker room or anything, but, I mean, you know, hire some more people. Uh, now, Sith Negan makes a good point about Eva Lee's because uh, we know Eva Lee's, we heard about her, and look, she came in and she sucked. She came in and fucking jerked around in the ring like a piece of garbage. Uh, Sith Negan says, Tessa Blanchard, Eva Lee, Austin Aries, low key, all the same boat. Talented in the ring, unlikable people in the locker room and in real life. Um, but also, you know, they just, dude, they can be pieces of crap or whatever they are. That doesn't even bother me as much. What really bothers me is when you're in the ring and you stop working, you stop selling, and you start disrespecting the business in the ring on national or on TV or whatever it was. That's a problem to me. 
I don't. Who was that girl? Not, Who did that? Fucking Nia Jax. That's what. Yeah, that was Evil East. Evil East. Evil took uh, a took a dump on on everything. She is never going to get signed ever again. Ever again. I don't think not for not not in AEW. She's been getting booked in a lot in a lot of other places, but not in AEW, I'm obviously. I'm gonna book her. Hell no. Not even an indie small show wouldn't do it because you're like you're putting your talent in jeopardy. If she's no show. I mean, no, you know, sells anything. Your fans are throwing stuff. I mean, you look like an idiot for signing her. <laughs> yeah. Yo, Ristafi, can you hear me now? Sorry, man. Yes, sir. What's up, baby? Get it wet. Yo, bro, are you doing okay after last night, bro? <laughs> no, I'm dead, dude. I re- I was reborn last night, don't you know? I was reborn. I was reborn into a new body. I took, I was carried upstairs by Leah, dragged up the stairs, and then Leah performed a satanistic transmogrification uh, of my body and my insides, and now I'm back to normal again. You need Jesus. No. Um. Yeah. Oh God, man, dude, I I felt your pain, bro. <laughs> <laughs> because I was just like, <laughs> dude, I I literally, it was night and day. I And again, I haven't really watched much WWE, like Raw or SmackDown, really. I heard SmackDown's doing really, really good. Um, yeah. But again, with if, Raw. I, I still think SmackDown's a 5 out of 10, maybe a 6 sometimes. So I don't think they're doing really good. I think they're 5 out it's of 10. It's just a Roman right? storyline of the edge and uh, right. stuff wrong with that's it. Some, that's sometimes when you see Roman for like, like if Roman's on screen for about 15, 20 minutes, sometimes on a Friday, I sometimes think that that segment is like a seven or even an eight, but everything else is still kind of like, you know, janky, oh. you know, sort of thing. But, but also they pace the show better and things like that. So anyway, that's my opinion. Five out of 10 usually though, for me, but not a two well, like raw or one or three or whatever, you know? Yeah. I mean, for me again, SmackDown was my show back when they had the first brand extension. And when they had the SmackDown Six, and I know you don't, you didn't really watch much at that time. And uh, for me, like that's like those are the actually really the days that I miss because SmackDown was taped. You can edit it, you can do this, you can do that, and the talent was just a lot hungrier. There were just a lot of new guys that came in uh, at the time, a lot of old guys that you had, but they were established from mid carders to main eventers, right? Paul Heyman was really the writer at that time. I mean, Paul's kind of back doing some behind the scenes stuff here and there with like guys like Roman and Brock and those guys. Um, but yeah, I mean, I always thought that the mid cards on SmackDown were always great, but again, no, it really depends on who was the, but now we don't have a really a booker anymore. We just have writers. Yeah. I mean, but I, I see there's a booker, but what, you know what it is, is like they, it's a huge filter. It's like, Hey, you know, come up with some stories, come up with some things for the, most of this shit, like 60% of this shit, come up with your shit and bring it to me. And then they bring it to him. And then, you know, it's like from there, Vince and them go with these, you know, with whatever, you know, they've got their own idea for one or two things. And then for everybody else, they, they, they take and they, they divide it up. They go, okay, I'll let, here's your idea. Well, 80% of it I'm throwing out, but I'm going to keep 20% of it. Now we're going to create this. And they, they put these pieces together through that creative process and filter and and depending on how much they care about you and if they really don't care about you that much but they need stuff to be on the show they just go with the writer the writer says hey here's the idea i got for this guy and then they go sounds good let's see what see it happen you know and then that they don't got to do that's 45 minutes right there that they don't got to worry about but then they care about two or three other things and they put more into it that's what i hear that's what you know it was different though when road dog was was over at smackdown i will say that when when Road Dog was in was on SmackDown, and SmackDown was Road Dog's show, the writing team brought stuff to Road Dog, and then Road Dog would be the one who decided what to do for SmackDown, and then he would go to Vince and say, "Vince, this is what we're doing," and pretty much Vince was like, "Okay, that's it. That was it. Road Dog's right. Was, it was it was really, it really was Road Dog's show." For for about yeah, I mean, two I, and years. the sad part about it is the sad part about it is Joe is like again I I harken back to like and again I'm not the biggest fan of Russo personally, um, but I will say that like for example like as you would say like you would get like eighty percent of what you would have right and you would give it to Vince and he would think okay we're not going to do this but also mind you that if you can only imagine a superstar who's trying to have an idea for a storyline or an angle. 
and Vince is just not in a certain mood that day or the wind was blowing in a different direction. Yep. He just wouldn't give two craps. Like it's, it's the same thing with the writing team. Yeah. Like this could be in a wholly, a totally different mindset. And because of that, that affects the shows. Well, one of the biggest problems with the writing team is the writing team has these long-term plans and ideas and so, I mean, dude, we've heard it from enough writers, former writers and road dogs and people like that themselves that we now know, I mean, that there are so many times that they start something on purpose because they have a purpose to doing it and it all just gets cut in or taken away or stopped or changed. And so any week, this whole idea that they could be laying out for three weeks will be just changed. You'll be like. Yeah. Vince, I got this idea, and then it will lead to this, and we'll do this, so let's go. And Vince is like, fine, all right, I like that, all right, go ahead. Then they do the first night of it, and then Vince goes, you know what, let's not do that. Let's have him do this instead. And it's a whole completely different thing, and then he, like, takes it over, and it's like, so that whole idea is just dead. Like, everything, like, that's a million of those stories, a million, including, like, the be one of the biggest examples is, obviously, we've, we've got examples over the years of writers calling the show, people emailing me, coming on the show, and giving us whatever the fuck. But one of the best examples is Road Dog himself, who when we, yeah. we tweeted Road Dog on Twitter a few years ago with The Undertaker, we said, dude, what the hell? You guys set up The Undertaker and this whole thing with whatever, AJ and all these other things. Now he's on Raw? Like, what's going on? Like, And then Road Dog fucking wrote, "That's new it's news to me too, Joe. And he was pissed. <laughs> he was pissed. He tweeted that out, and then he fucking, then the... The dirt sheets picked it up. And I remember my tweet was on the dirt sheets everywhere. Like thousands of people saw it. And then, you know, he would go on to DM me. I won't say what he said in DMs because it was confidential stuff that he said to me. I, I, you know, he was talking to me as a person, not trying to tell me. Leak right, this right, right. Yeah, he wasn't it saying wasn't leak this yet. Yeah, he was like, please don't say this to anyone. But like, so I won't. And I never will. But like, I, so I know what happened. But the bottom line is everybody knew what happened because he tweeted that out in my tweet, which was like, news to me too, Joe, because we had a whole plan for him. And I was told what the plan was. And it made a lot of sense. And guess what? That didn't happen at all because Vince got a tickle in the pickle out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like. <laughs> I don't get it, Joe. I mean, they got all these writers. Why don't they just take all these writers and they concentrate on one story? That, that, that just say I'm in charge of Drew McIntyre's match. That's my story for the night. Drew McIntyre to make him go over or he loses, but I gotta make that story look very impressive for everybody to say, "Oh, that was a good match." Let's see where that story goes. But they don't. It's just brain scattered everywhere. And and Drew and Sheamus to me the other night, man, was I bored. I was just so bored by we've that. We've seen the match. Yeah. We've yeah. seen them over and over again. Yes. It's it was like same. you I, saw two losers fight for the number one contender spot for the United States Championship again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it was like, what are they doing this for? Oh God, it was, and it wasn't another, good. No, why can't we see another mid card get shot? Like I know everybody said, like Ricochet, he's a jobber. And shit. Give me somebody different. Like, Here's why. Somebody. Here's why. You ready for this? You ready for this? They're not good on the microphone, or they won't allow them to fail on the microphone. You're right. It, not it's on one of those two. You're right. It's one of those two. Now, I think I think Drew can be better on the mic a little bit, obviously. Because, again, I, I don't know if you guys were watching the other night, but I showed – I played video of – who was it? Rocky Maivia with JR. Did you guys see that? Uh, was that on the Raw review yes. last night? Yes. Yeah. And that, that interview was straight out of these same type of guys. Like, well, listen, The Rock, you know, you know, Jim Cornette, The Rock says when you sleep with sleeping dogs, you get fleas or whatever. It was like, dude, that's that's all they do. They write that shit over and over. That was Bruce Pritchard. No, but Joe, but this is the problem. It's it's like now it's like you have no leeway to because, like, remember, if you remember the uh, the John Moxley podcast with, with Jericho, he even said, mm -hmm. OK, what if we change this word up or we try that word? They bring him back to Vince and then Vince would literally bring a message back to Dean Ambrose at the time and basically say, yeah. tell Dean to not try to change this or change that, blah, blah, blah. So realistically speaking, Vince is implying we have a glass ceiling in this company. It's either my way or the highway. Yeah, and listen, that's the thing, is Vince is doing all of this. Everybody is, but everybody is allowing it. Everybody is going with Vince. Bruce Pritchard is doing whatever Vince says. Triple H is doing whatever Vince says. Sean. Sean Michaels is doing whatever Triple H says, and he says does whatever Vince says. 
So, you know, this is all people need to stand up to Vince and they don't want to. Nobody wants to do it. And that's what it is. It's that's why I blame Triple H. I don't think poor Triple H. I don't. I think Triple H is also an enabler. And that's what CM Punk said. He said he just yeah. you'll just kiss your father in law's ass up to whatever. That's exactly what Triple H does. I, th- I, I remember somebody putting the tweet out when the first Rampage came out. They have an hour show. There's like 40 minutes of wrestling. And then a SmackDown at the bottom only had 27 minutes in a two hour show. I was like, what? wow. I just blew my mind. It just blew my mind. I was like, that's an hour show and it had 40 minutes of wrestling. Well, I, had I'm hoping this. I'm hoping to watch. I think I'm going to watch NXT later, and I and I hope the Bachelor thing is good because it's a sign to me too that maybe NXT. Because part of the reason why NXT has had problems recently to me is because they don't feel big. There's not a big atmosphere. It's just all about go out wrestle sport thing, and I think they're missing some of that outside the box stuff that AEW has. So hopefully they can do some of that. And I'm not talking about zombies either, by the way. But um, I, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like that. the first episode of ECW, the WWE version. Oh my god! Yeah, I, I got fear that that's gonna happen. Yeah, uh, DJ Scandalous. The way uh, the, um, James Woodcock definitely has a very Southern type accent, like that. He goes, he goes wrestling. Yeah, he's got a very uh, funny uh, Southern accent. Um, and and it's and it's so funny because everybody bastard. compares like a- AEW to. WCW and uh, the only co- the only comparison at this point and again you could you can say the look you could say the idealism of collecting all the stars are from elsewhere but honest to god dude they're just from the south they're from they're from Florida technically i mean right. WWE is Stanford but they have their operations in Florida so it's 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 kind of ironic how WWE <laughs> says that you always talk about like you know southern people and how we don't want southern on our television but yet for like over 20 years you had JR and the king <laughs> on the commentary, and now you guys are practically based in the South, even though that right. Florida is not technically a Southern state, unless if you go to like maybe like Jacksonville, or I'm sorry, not Jacksonville. Um, uh, no, 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 Jackson. Yeah, Jacksonville, like northern. northern you want to take over Tony Khan's football team? Who <laughs> loves that Jacksonville Jaguars uh, shirt? In in the words of in the words of Kevin Nash, as long as I get paid, <laughs> right. <laughs> I love the DJ Scandalous. Like somebody said, I love your appearance on Sports Wars. But DJ Scandalous, um, I see his comments in so many things, DJ, that even like not even related to wrestling and stuff. I've seen your comments places and I'm like, dude, what the fuck? Like you're into the weirdest shit that I'm into too. It's weird. Like I'll, I'll be like looking at a video, then I'll go down in the comments and there's like DJ Scandalous, like top comment. And I'm like, what the hell? Like who, he knows this guy. Like I listen to this guy too. It's just funny. Like I don't know why. I was just thinking about that when someone else mentioned something like that. But that's funny. By the way, how how did you not get the news from earlier today when it broke that the New Day and Taker were going to be doing some Netflix? I was surprised I, that you. Didn't- you know what it is? I I guarantee it's this. First of all, I woke up early after only sleeping four hours. Right? Like you guys know how much I needed sleep last night. I was a psycho last night. And I was right. tired, and I was just half asleep, hadn't slept in a couple of days. So I decided to put on a fun show. You know, I decided to put on a show that, like, you know, Joe's creepy, and he's going into this, like, WWE made me do it. And then I start making videos, <laughs> like, on, you know. And I thought that was compelling also to, like, kind of freak, make people go, what the fuck is he, what's he doing? Like, and that was the idea of the whole thing. I just thought, like, we will go on Twitter. But I also was kind of serious. Like, most of what I was ranting on was pretty much real. But the bottom line is, I didn't sleep well. Then I slept four hours. My son had his first day of school. Even though my other kids went to school last week, um, my son had his first day. So I woke up to help give a shower to the other kids and take care of them, because Leah was doing a million different things. And so I was like, yeah, let me help out. And but I couldn't get back to sleep. So then I, now I'm like tired and delusional and I've been asleep for four hours and now I'm awake and I can't get back to bed. And so then I finally, an hour and a half later to two hours later, I fell asleep. And so then I woke up at about 3 PM and because I had all this stuff I had to do earlier that I didn't do, I was then running out to do it and doing all this stuff. And then we had a problem with a leak in the house because the windows are shit and the, the whole wood area deteriorated and water was coming in and go and we noticed a yellow stain in the living room. And I was like, Leah's like, what the hell is that? I'm like, oh, what the fuck? I go upstairs. So I was siliconing the windowsills and shit uh, for a couple hours. And then I just, I saw the news about Kevin Owens. 
Then I saw more news, and then I, then another person said something like he's leaving, and then I saw the confirmation from Cyclops. And once I saw the the Cyclops confirmation, I was like, okay, this is this is really a thing. I'm gonna go live with it. And I already planned to go live with the Matrix stuff because me and Jake did a couple of podcasts about the Matrix, so I wanted to go live with it today. And then the teaser, I'm sure I'll go live with that. But then Jake is in the hospital, couldn't be here. But because the wrestling news was good, I figured let's go on and do it then. I'll do it solo if I have to. And I was actually just going to come on tonight and play video games. That was my goal was to come on and play video games and just hang out for a few and, you know, whatever. But anyway, yeah, that's the answer. So all that stuff happened, and I just never – I didn't check social media much today and – I was busy. Like, I don't know, man. Like, it's 1048, but I feel like it's 5 p.m. So that's... Get, well, get well soon, Jake. <laughs> that's all yeah. I can say at this yeah, point. Yeah, ja- I'm going to need Jake back for my sanity. Uh, he's. I mean, again, I- I'm I'm more than welcome to, you know, anytime that you ever need a little bit of extra help, especially, like, you know, you know when things get a little dire, like, you know, don't, feel free to, like, message me or whatever like that. I'll definitely, my, like, my opinion you know. last night was I knew that Raw was probably going to be terrible, and I knew that I was drained. So I told Jake, because Jake was like, I'm going to try to rush home and everything. And I'm like, nah, dude, fuck that. I'm not even going to be on long. Even if Jake was here, I would have been like, dude, let's do an hour and get out of here. Let's take it easy. We don't need to be reviewing Raw, you know, for a million hours. I mean, obviously, it, you know, and it, it can depend, right? If, if, I'm, if I need to pay the electric bill, you know, I'll probably stay on two hours and try to go into more wrestling news. Maybe you get a couple more donos. Maybe there's more commercials that will happen on the YouTube video. Yeah, I'll probably stay on a little bit longer to stay alive, you know, whatever. But it was just like we had a great weekend. There was no need to be on too much, and there wasn't much to say, and I was dead. And I was like, let us let me get off the air. But I tried to give people something, and I, I felt like there wasn't much to say, so why not There go? isn't anything to say. Yeah, so instead <laughs> I, I, I went on a rant about X-Pac and Triple H and... It was fucking hilarious. Like, I tried to just entertain people by flipping out. I mean, obviously, like, I meant some of the stuff I said about Triple H and X-Pac and all that stuff, especially Sean Waltman, X-Pac, but not really, you know, it's on X-Pac. It was a lot of just take real and just shoot on this guy just to make people laugh because I just felt like nobody was entertained by anything that night and... They really wasn't. Well, you're much always entertaining. You're always entertaining, brother. I, just, I hope you know, so. I hope. I, I hope people thought like this guy's fucking an idiot. Like this is hilarious. He's a maniac. But- I just felt bad. I just felt bad for you because I remember when you made the the mention to, um, oh, nobody will hire me, and like I was close to signing with you. I was like, I just felt really bad, bro. I was like, damn. Yeah, I mean, some of that was real, but it was a little real. But it was also like. You know, I'm just cutting a promo kind of thing, you know, and it was Joe, it, it's real. I mean that I really do mean that what I said, but it's really not that big a deal. I just thought it'd be funny to play on it a bit. Um, so you up? really think they'll let you like be a commentator that freely? I think you're gonna, if you've even gone. What over do you mean? There, what do you mean that freely? What do you mean that freely, though? What are you saying? Like, like let you like let you be you. I think well, I, I mean, have you heard my other commentary? You're really good. That's what I'm saying. But, but I mean, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not doing anything crazy on the other commentary. You know what I mean? I'm. I know, I'm being a commentator. You know, w, you know, WE, the WE way. It oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're. Okay, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. No. Listen. Yeah. I'm good. I'm pretty good with like a director in my ear. Like I'm used to that. Like I. I went to school when I did that in news stations. When I worked at. When I worked for. Uh, at Nesson and when I worked at other sports locations like in New England in the 2004s and 5s, I mean, that's fine. I understand. Like, there's things they want you to say. There's things they want you to put over. But I think I, I think after a while, though, I really would work in, try to work in what I want to say and do. They let Morrow do what he did. And I know they didn't like Morrow, but I don't think Morrow bent at all. I think Morrow said, well, that's not the way I do it. And then Vince was like, but uh, that's the way I want you to do it. And more, I was like, well, then somebody else can do it. I guess I don't, I'll try to do what you want. You know, and I don't think he ever meshed. But I think if you go yeah. in and you say, I will do what you want, but can I please bring my presence so that we can make people smile? Yeah, yeah, because like, the thing is, is that I think it, for two reasons. One is the fact that Morrow, and again, this is nothing against him, but like the fact that he's bipolar, and if you gave him a directive that it just made him so anxious yes. and it threw him off, Bro, God only knows what he would have said on the air or what he would have did if he, like, walked off the air. Like, that one time, like, that one guy, I can't remember his name, and probably duly noted, but, like, a couple of years ago, like, he left, like, literally in the middle of a broadcast, which was a shoot. And I thought it was a work. Yeah. But I, then, I, I, you, know, I, you know. I would have to be there to experience it, you know, and I'm assuming, like, you know, and then the thing, the other thing is they put coal with whoever it is. If So if I was there, which I wouldn't be, but pretend I somehow could get hired, um, 
I, they would put Cole with me or whoever the new person is to work with them, and so it would be on Cole's ass. So it would, be, you know, Cole, it would be on Cole. So Cole would be wanting you to do all these specific things. So I, I think that, you know, you would be anybody would probably be more suited for AEW because in AEW they're not going to say too much to you. You know, Tony Khan's going to say. All right, Jr. We got a commercial coming up in 15 seconds. Um, it's going to be about this, and when you come back, plug. We'll we'll, ha- we'll help you plug uh, the next event or whatever. So trip, you know, 15. Okay, commercial, commercial. Now hit the commercial. Oh, and AEW action continues. We're right back. You know, and then they come back, and now they've already set up the whole cake. Okay, Jr. We're plugging double or nothing Sunday. Uh, whatever the fuck, October 28th. Um, this is the deal. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, I want to invite you into your homes. That's all, and then that's it. They they leave. After that, they go. That's it. And then Jr. and them can hear the cues sometimes in the ears, and that's about it. Like, but when you listen to Vince, Vince is just it's just like it's screaming. It say it say it again. Yeah, say it again. yeah. Mick Foley, Mick Foley talked about that a bit actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> actually, it's funny and funny enough. Um, I remember uh, one time Michael Cole actually got hot. Uh, during a uh, a break, and I was actually recorded that eventually made it to the internet, and Cole like clapped back on Vince. Oh, I remember, <laughs> and we played that here where he goes, he goes, he he gets mad, like because uh, he's not talking to Vince, he just gets mad. He goes, they want me to say it again. We just fucking did it, like fucking, we just I just said it, and then Vince gets on the horn and goes. God damn it, Michael! I said to, and he goes, "Oh, sorry, sir. Yeah, you want me to do it again? Okay. Yeah, we've all heard that." <laughs> or, or here's another here's another story. Uh, Jr. once said this on Sports Center, where like he explained how Vince wanted him to say something, and Jr. would not. He's like, "Say something, say something," and then finally right. Jr. gets to the gorilla position, and Vince is like, "Thank." God, you did not say what I was going to have you say. I'm like, <laughs> damn it, Vince. Like, it, it, this is another reason why. I can't stand him yeah and not necessarily as a person but just more so just as somebody to work with because i'm like dude be because he's never satisfied number one which i can understand because he's a very competitive guy but then the other thing is like when you decide on something unless if it's like something fell through then obviously you recover but it's like dude just go with one direction and one directive i mean for you joe personally i was just going to say this before i'm a little bit like vince myself that's so really funny yeah, yeah no no i can understand that yeah it's like almost like a perfectionistic but not not not, not really because i'm definitely not a perfectionist but i'm somebody who's wily like oh we're gonna do you know i'm very wily but i'm not the perfectionist that vince is i'll say that though i'm definitely not that but i mean i'm wily so i understand vince i understand him being like oh please you know I, he wants it done that way <laughs> That's why I always wanted to work there because I always thought like I'm like minded. I get what he wants to do. I get the repetition he wants. I understand that, but I think my voice, even saying the things they want said repeated, will sound more natural than somebody else who right. almost sounds like a reporter doing it for some reason. I don't. That's my opinion. What? I don't know if it's true though. I don't know. No, I was just gonna say because honest to God, for you, your voice was made to be a heel. I would like, love to do. I would really love to be a heel commentator. That would be real fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just be a color commentator. You know, honest to God, come up with like, dude, metaphors up the yin yang puns. But you also got to be careful because again, yeah. we're living in a whole new era. So well, any one little thing can be taken do, out of context. Do you remember the one I was? I was actually worried about this because I was sitting next to him, and he's a you know we're living in a very liberal state. And I was sitting next to him, and I didn't know what he was going to react. I did. I said it, and then I thought, "Ooh, God, I hope, I hope that that's okay that I said that." No one said anything to me that it was bad, and the guy laughed, so I figured it was okay. But it was close. And do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, a couple of months ago, when I played the clip of me, um, I wasn't heel, but I was trying to spice up the commentary since the two of us were both doing like play by play. So I, yeah. tr- I tried to be more color. You know what I'm saying? Like since, since like Rich Palandino, since Rich Palandino is just an announcer, he's he's a he's a world renowned announcer, but he knows you know Rich for the most part. You know he's known as that, and I'm the second guy. Then in my opinion, even though he's the ring announcer and I was sort of driving, he was really driving to be honest. And I was like, okay, well, I tried to strap into a color role more because okay, I've been in the ring, I've wrestled a bunch. Rich Rich hasn't, so I'll just I'll sort of just do the do the I was the wrestler before guy even though I barely wrestled but it's you know I can do that and I have wrestled for many years so I did that but I also a couple times I threw out those little you know risque things and did you hear do you know what I'm talking about yeah the rough uh, yeah I yeah I vaguely remember. did you know this specific line or no because I'll tell everybody 
don't remember the specific line, but I do remember there was like this awkward kind of like, oh. Yeah, he goes, yeah, exactly. That's the one you're thinking of. So he goes, <laughs> he goes, yikes. He goes, and he actually said that like, yikes. And I was like, okay, I was worried he was going to like, I actually was worried like a kid at school. I actually thought maybe that he was going to reach over and like, hold, like, because he's a nice man. I thought maybe he'd reach over and hold my arm and kind of look at me and be like, what are you doing? Like, but he didn't do anything like that. He was having a good time and he enjoyed it. But I, this was it. Excited out there in the crowd. It was the guy's father was in the audience, and I said he almost died in front of his dad. And that's okay. That was a fine comment. But the comment, right. where, the comment where I might have gone a little far was, like, Weymouth is kind of known, you know, in Massachusetts a little bit. You know, there's drugs everywhere, but Weymouth is a little druggy-ish, and obviously my city has a little rivalry with Weymouth. So I said, hey, listen, I know a lot of wrestlers from Weymouth. You know, he's, but they're wrestling with substance. And, you know, that was just a joke about the Weymouth people. And all the It's a double entendre. Yeah. And so it's funny. Like, and I just randomly thought of that because the people were chanting, the people in the crowd were chanting, let's go Weymouth or Weymouth wrestling, Weymouth wrestling. And I was like, what are they chanting? He goes, Weymouth wrestling, I think. Oh, Weymouth wrestling. Yeah, I know some wrestlers from Weymouth. Uh, you know, they're wrestling with substance. And uh, he's like, yikes. And I was, wor I was like, ooh, I might have, I don't know. I don't know if they're going to like that, but. Nobody said anything to me, so I'm not fired. It's like local commentator makes joke about drug, you know, or whatever. Can you imagine? Can you just imagine like some high school paper just for whatever <laughs> reason? A bunch of marks are just like, oh, this commentator said something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, not hiring. Get out of here. I have to go to. I have to go. Go there. take off, man. Yeah, no, appreciate you being here, man. Thank you. I had fun. No problem, Joe. Here's, yeah. here's the clip. Well. There we go. The Weymouth faithful in oh. attendance tonight. Weymouth wrestlers, is that what they're saying? I think so. I think so. I got this headset on. I'm able to, I can only hear me and you. I know a lot of wrestlers from Weymouth. They're wrestling with substance, though. And now a spear oh. right into the corner. Yikes. And oh, an explosive. Uh, I was losing. I was like, I can't Wait a win. minute. Are you sure that yikes was directed at you, or was it more so directed to the match? I think it was directed at me. I'm pretty sure. Like, okay. He was like, yikes. Substance, though. And now a spear oh. right into the corner. Yikes. And oh, an explosive. <laughs> like, I couldn't. I mean, dude, I don't know. But I hope, that was the worst thing I said. And I really didn't do too many of those, but there was a couple of them where I was like, I don't know, this is funny to me. But I love that. So, yeah, oh, I, would, I, would, I would love to be a color commentator. That'd be fire. Did Bullfrog just come in here as if he was invited? What's up, Bullfrog? What up, Daddy? You call me it's daddy. It's, time. I'm going to throw up. The chairman has arrived. You're the chairman. Cha so you just took the, the Sean Spears' gimmick? Yeah. I, I whacked him. I attacked him. We just got off the air. You whacked <laughs> him and you attacked You got off with Sean Spears? No. I Sean mean, dude, Sean like Spears' his gimmick is the chairman. You realize that, right? No, nah, you. I bro, mean, I'm I, just I, saying. I, like you, you're you're telling me that you took Sean Spears' gimmick. No, I was trying to be like Sean. You, you know, you whack him, you attack him. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but you, but I'm, I'm referencing the fact that you called yourself the fucking chairman, which is. In, in in other words, Sean Spears could technically sue you if you wanted to. Yeah, like you're ripping off the chairman. Why why are you calling yourself the chairman? Like that's Sean Spears' Cause gimmick. Because I'm, I'm like Vince, I'm like Vince McMahon, man. I'm your star, bro. I'm. High profile. You should be beaten out back of a Denny's and left for dead. Yeah. You like my new icon? No, you look like an asshole. No, uh, you uh, Bader, actually, bro, actually, yeah, you, you look like Bader me? taking a shit. Look at this. Yeah. Uh, Enlarge wow. it. There it is. <laughs> yes, uh, yes. Uh, somebody made that for me. Well, I gotta tell you, man, you're not allowed to be here. You're, I have to mute you right now. We have to. We're, I, the only reason why I brought you in right now. I brought you into the call to to permanently mute you because you're supposed to be permanently muted via Sith oh, Negan. Dude, I'm your star, man. I'm like your JD here. I know. I understand wow. you're saying that. Wow. You. I mean, JD. Well, come wow. on, bro. Are you serious? We I have to. Icon status. We're gonna have to go ahead and and have the ceremonial muting of you right now, thanks to Sith Negan. Like, oh, in, dude, how about if somebody bombs and then then you can. I'll do it for you. Hey, D well kick the only your credit card and bomb me a hundred dollars and then you can meet me. The only person that can bring you back and unmute you 
is going to have to be Sith Negan, probably. It's He's the only one that can bring you I back. Did. I've been in the need to Sith Negan now. Sith Negan, my lord and my master. Well, right now, it's... My, uh, my Jesus Christ. Wow. <laughs> well, <laughs> all right, Bullfrog. Well, here it is, the ceremonial mute. He's been muted, everybody. There it is. It's official now. As We've been waiting days to do this for Sith Negan, who a week ago muted him for life. For life. There it is, folks. You can see it. He's been muted for life. The only person that can bring him back is Sith Negan. That's it. You're in, your life is in his hands, uh, Bullfrog. You're going to have to suck up to him. Figure it out. I, I, I can't in good conscience do anything. I'm sorry. Maybe me and you can do a podcast over on Corrupted Nation. Bullfrog, I'd be happy to do that. Over on Corrupted Nation, do a podcast or something like that. I'm down. Let's do it. We'll do uh, honestly or something. But, you know, here, I, I got to adhere to, uh, you know, what happened with Sith Negan, to be honest. He's so, been officially Tommied. You, yeah, well, you've been Tommied. Yeah, another another one out, another one bites the dust. I'm sorry. You know, there's nothing Damn. I can do about it. The, the fact that he considered Sith to be his Lord Jesus Christ just says a lot. Well, he did try to, you know, suck up to him, I guess. So that's, I'll give him that credit. I guess. Uh, maybe I'm behind in the don't. Uh, do I get the donos? Okay, I got everything. Or no, shit here's one. Bomb. Black you pumpkin head. A shit bomb. <laughs> Joe, if the Matrix isn't amazing, I quit life. Well, I gotta be honest, Black pumpkin head. I'm worried about some some of the stuff we've been talking about tonight about the Matrix is that we're hearing that people are saying it is a bit woke, and that scares me. But I I know the directors became women. And so that's, you know, there's going to be some stuff that they bring into it, I'm sure. Although one of them actually is only Lily. I believe Lily, Lily or Wachowski is the only one directing it. Shit bomb! So, I don't know. It depends. I'm not. You become. I'm a little worried, though. But a shit bomb. We'll see what happens. What's up, Joe? Is Co definitely all elite? No, he's definitely not all elite, but I mean, pretty much. I mean, he's putting out coordinates about Mount Rushmore and shit like that. His contract is up earlier than expected, apparently. Because I guess what about the, what about his um, no complete compete clause? Is that initiated in his contract? I think it's a thirty day. So, you know, I don't think he can. So let's say it's, it expires next week or in two weeks or whenever it expires. We don't not even know that yet. Then he's another. I, I bet it's another. It's at least another thirty days. I don't think they fucked up Kevin Owens' contract like they fucked up the NXT guys. So it's not like because norm because because a normal. And I'm sorry for interrupting, but I think it's like normally like a ninety day. It's no, it's sometimes it's 90, sometimes it's 30. Usually it's 90, but this Owens contract was signed three years ago, I think, before they started really making sure they did 90 days on, ah, on all okay, of them. Got so, it. But I don't know, dude. That's a coin flip. He could have a he could have a 90 day, and that's what some people did have, so he could, but I don't know. Actually, Cyclops should have a report out soon, probably telling us all the details. I'm, I'm assuming because I've never because I've never heard of an extension on a contract if it was already made, let's say, a couple years prior, and all of a sudden the owner's like, "Oh yeah, by the way, we're going to extend that clause in the contract." Which, by the way, I don't think is technically legal. All right, let me look at the update. Well, they agree to it. Okay, okay. This is the the up the update is huge. I have the update. I didn't even look at the update yet. We're way wrong about this. Here's the update, everybody. This is important. I hope people are listening. I'm sorry. Kevin Owens' WWE contract is expiring within the next six months. So, uh, you know, we don't know when that six months is. Um, February? Uh, well, it could be, yeah, February or sooner. Um, we, we He signed in 2018. Mm -hmm. And... In, in an interview that he re-signed for five years, apparently putting him within the company until 2023. But an update, Owen's WWE contract is actually set to expire January 2022. So it's January 22. Oh, okay. Uh, and not sometime early in 2023. So, so yeah, you still got a ways to go. Just for everybody wondering, we've been wondering about what the exact number is, and everywhere is confirming that number, so... Right, but I just personally, for me, would I like to see Kevin Owens in another company? I, I mean, I don't even care, even if it's an AEW or not. I mean, it'd be interesting, but I also would think that you would been in WWE since what, like 2014, 2015, somewhere around there, and you're making great money, and 
I mean, again, I, I, I'm, again, whether it's the creativity or whether it's the money, it's Russell's choice. <laughs> but again, I just feel like would he be better off somewhere else? Probably. But again, if he's making the great money and it's providing for his son, mm-hmm. shoot, I, I, you know, I mean, again, depending on how, because I mean, the last program that he had with Roman, I mean, again, I mean, he had some pretty good matches, but again, no, just I, just the way that it it just turned out, and he wasn't really doing anything after that. Yeah. It only just goes to show that, I mean, are you going to be sitting on the bench for a year or two and not do anything? Or, like, you know, I, I, I personally, same thing happened with Joe. I want to see him in the ring, personally. Uh, Joe, the fact that he's down in NXT doing his thing, great. But is if that's how he wants to end his career, I mean, go ahead. But again, no, it's like you look at Joe because he's been in there since 2000s. Like, like, how many more years does he have left? I still strongly believe that some, if, if it still exists, you'll see Samoa Joe stop by Impact at some point, like later in his career if he's left WWE. Unless he stays, you know, maybe he likes staying. I don't know, maybe, but I'm sure he likes working down in NXT with Triple H. And Shit bomb. I'm sure, that's part of. If Owens runs out his current contract to completion, there is no non-compete clause. Alec Hole and Danielson. Okay, there you go. Colonel San- uh, Stutters says if he just runs out and doesn't renew, then there's no compete. There's no no compete. So he'd be there. He'd be there late January. If oh that's wow, the case. that's cool. So basically, after the Royal Rumble. Yep. They probably wouldn't wow. put him in much. They, I, I bet you they keep him off TV if they find out he's leaving. That's what they do to other people. How many people can, um, or wrestlers can, um, AEW really hire? How many more, you know, of yeah. these guys coming out of WWE? That, yeah. How can they keep paying these guys these money? I think this almost looks like they're trying to bury AEW. Yeah, granted, the, the content's been great. But if you oversaturate them, just like WWE, I feel is oversaturated with talent, um, that could hurt you in the long run. Yeah, it's kind and, of, it's and, kind and of the a, money. That's a thing we've been mentioning in this that, like, oh, Vince is just drying them up. But I mean, listen, they're rich and shit, so it doesn't matter. Tony Khan doesn't care. He's almost like the Joker or something. He doesn't care if he if they make. I'm sure he wants to make money, but if they lose money, make money, doesn't whatever. He's in it for the wrestling. He's in it for the the idea of this whole thing. So if they break even, he's fine with it. But I'm sure he do- he has a limit. Obviously, he didn't buy Final Countdown, right? F- half a million dollars? He said no. So they're not willing to just completely be ridiculous. But, dude, I mean, how many more? Dude, maybe like, what, three to five other people? I mean, we said this earlier. I've been streaming now for a couple hours, and we brought it up a couple different times. We bring it up again now. But it's the the lower mid-card and mid-card at AEW, they're probably getting a little annoyed. Like oh fuck! Yeah. Like I barely had time before. Now what, what, holy fuck! Are you gonna bring in more people? I was gonna bring this up earlier, Joe, because the thing is, is that granted, we're seeing all this great talent come in and who've been in, around the independence, gone through WWE maybe, or have been around the independence for probably more than like ten to twenty years. But the thing is, though, you have all this underbelly of talent that is being developed. Um, some of them out of GCW, some of them out of the, uh, the you know the Jersey area, because I know guys that. Um, work with a lot of the talent that are being developed for AEW is for like their farming system. And I get the idea that yes, you want to have names, 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 and maybe they not be big names in terms of WWE creations, but definitely because they're internet darlings and they've been around for a long time. Yeah, that's great. But then you have all this under talent that are hungry that are being developed, but then if they're just going to remain on dark and elevation, what does that say about you're trying to keep this as useful as possible going forward, let's say, the next three to five years? Yeah. Yeah, no, I get that. And you're right. It's going to be – I don't know. I'm just having fun with it, and I just, I'm just picturing that younger talent being like, oh, what the fuck? Extreme Shaft is here too, man. What's up, Extreme? How, how are you, brother? What's up, Joe? Keep it hard. I don't know. Always. I'm just going to pee in this bottle right here. Don't get stuck. I hope I do. Um, yo, yo, Shaft. What up, man? I wonder if, hey, is, doing, is, man? is Shaft a Matrix guy or no? Am I a Matrix? I, 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 I like the first one. They, they kind of start losing me. I'll watch. I'll definitely watch the movie. Um. And we'll, yeah. Or is it a series? I don't even remember. It's, I, don't it's a, it's I think it's a trick. A trequel. Uh. I think they're doing three, three of them. I gotcha. You yeah, I'll that. check. I'll definitely check them out. If Matrix Four is woke, I will also end myself. <laughs> uh, 
odd. Uh, listen, I'm not that worried either because two and three were so weird that like it was like, all right, listen, if this sucks too, that's fine. I'll just always pop in the first one, and then. But how I- how can they go from being woke because the first one's definitely a woke style movie? Yeah. To, to being not woke, I don't think they can do that. Well, the first movie mm. you got to understand the first movie. You can find a lot of things you can point out in the first movie in the dialogue and go, oh, my God, we get it. This guy is supposed to be the story's Jesus. We get it. The one, Neo, we get it. But – and then there's also other tidbits that you can point out and be like, okay, that was taken from here. That was taken from here. But the thing is, though, the reason why it became what it became was because it, just like Star Wars, just like Star Trek, take all the influences that you have, put it all in one major deal, and it will, like, change the game. But – now, looking back 20 years later, going to this whole new trequel, or, or, or a trilogy, I should say, not trequel, trilogy, it's just, it, it's going to be weird. It's going to be a different, it's a different take of the Matrix. That's what it's going to be. Yeah, I mean, I think, and the thing is, you can do this, because in the other Matrix movies, you know, they, in the other ones, they explain, like, you know, the Matrix gets reset all the time, and there's, there's always these anomalies, and you know, so I don't know what kind of they can do so many different things here that doesn't necessarily disrupt the other shit that it's fine. The big thing is probably that it's going to be like, you know, Trinity is more important. And the there's a blue haired girl that will probably be I, I think she was in the Animatrix or in the comics. So and, you know, it's the movie's always been androgynous. I, I, I said this the last time they purposely look for some characters that were like, you know, all these different styles and all these different people and people that were like kind of like non-binary looking and stuff like that. And they wanted that stuff even back then, you know, they knew what they were doing and there was a ton of diversity in in the movies. I was just going to say that was, that was probably the number one reason why I actually kind of liked watching them from time to time because they just had such a diverse cast because originally Will Smith was going to be in that film. Yeah. Dude, did you ever hear Will be like, thank God I didn't do it. I would have ruined the movie. Oh God. Well, remember this is, this is way before, um, uh, that superhero movie that he did, and also before that movie that he did with his son, not not the um, not the Pursuit of Happiness, but the other one, it was like a oh no, like not a, Legend, but the other one where he was uh, like the spaceship crashed or something like yes. that. Yeah, it was. Like, yeah, that that was garbage. Mm. That was just him trying to get his son on on a, on a map without, and nobody would take a risk on something. So he, whatever. Yeah, it wasn't good. Um, but no, I think that he he. One of the things that he said that was interesting was he was like. He goes, if I was if I was Neo, Val Kilmer was going to be Morpheus because they wanted they specifically oh, they wanted oh, they wanted oh, to cast a, <laughs> they wanted to cast a black man as the lead role. And then they wanted to cast. So then they felt that, OK, well, we'll cast a white guy then as Morpheus so that they could have all that. And and then when Will Smith said no, they were like, who the fuck can we get? We don't even know. And then they were like, well, what about Keanu Reeves? And. Then they were like, oh, yeah, Keanu Reeves. And so then they made Morpheus Black. So then they went with Loris Fishburne. Fishburne. And so that's what Will Smith said. I've heard him say it in two different interviews. So he's like, dude, you would have had Morpheus be Val Kilmer, and I would have been Neo. He goes, so you're, yeah. you're welcome. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny. After Earth. Thanks, Colonel Stutters. That was it. Yeah, terrible. Um, Thank did, you. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah so, I, like, I, I, dude, Val yeah. Kilmer is Morpheus? Like, yeah, I can I can literally imagine. I mean, again, if you've seen the movie The Doors with Val Kilmer, and again, he's made he's made some okay. I like I like Val Kilmer. No, I like Val. See, I like Val Kilmer and Will Smith, but it's just like seems weird after knowing. Yeah, and and, and looking back on it, the way that Lawrence Fishburne, which by the way, I respect him as an actor. I love Apocalypse Now, uh, Boys in the Hood, all those great films, Higher Learning. But then when you see him as Morphe, it's, it's very difficult not to see him in that role and see somebody else in it because he right. he brought he brought almost like this. I would even want to call it like an ebony el- elegance to it because it was very it was almost like classical, but it also had almost like a its own universe type of a style that I've never seen before in a character, which I thought was really interesting. I wonder if uh, one of the things they're going to do in this movie, because remember, Lawrence Fishburne isn't in this movie, and that's weird. So I wonder if there's two different things. Is there a younger version of Morpheus in this movie? Number two, is Lawrence Fishburne going to show up later? So that's like a save thing for the next movies, you know, a surprise for later. So that's why they didn't put him in the first one here. That makes sense. But also, do you remember how the... uh, I mean, I guess this is a spoiler, but everybody pretty much knows. But whatever the um, 
you remember how the Oracle, the, the lady who played the Oracle died? And then, the, yes. the, so then the new one came in and she was like, oh, they did something to me. And I know I don't look like you guys remember me. So I was like, well, if that's the case, that means that can be done. So what if that's done to, you know, that could be done to Morpheus or anybody like who's still playing the character. Well, well, well the thing is, is that remember Morpheus was not in the matrix. You're right. He wasn't I mean, a program. Was, they're of, they're of the matrix because remember they're all the, the human beings who were born out of that, out of those fields. Like, you know, I get that. Right. But the thing is, though, is that, again, they got saved from the Matrix, right? You're right. And she's not, so, she was a program. They're not programs, necessarily. Yeah. So, I, I mean, the only way that you could bring back a young Morpheus is that, I mean, again, I don't know if this was like a prequel of the original. We don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it's after. We don't Neo know. We don't, we don't really know what it is. I mean, and remember in the other Matrix, they said, like, this is the 11th or 8th version of the Matrix. This has been all repeated before, and the one always shows up. Like so, we don't. Shit bomb. Is this a futuristic one? Evening, uh, Joe. Oh, myself, Red Comet Man, AJ, and Ryan the Heel are all waiting in the Discord. We want Bullfrog back on it. We what? want to destroy Bullfrog with shit talk. Whoa, but uh, oh, uh, D Welsh, what's up, man? Is that Bullfrog donating as D Welsh? Come on. <laughs> I, I'm feeling. Like, I, yeah, I feel like I'm getting rickrolled, bro. Well, the other no, thing I, is, I think that was really him. It probably was him, yeah. But but Bullfrog left anyway. I will say that, but uh, he's seen me in here. He got scared. Listen, you, you'd have to tell that to Sith Negan. He is the Lord at this point. The, the, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, we really have to ask the Lord's prayer. Uh, D Welsh, was that your dono? Let's see if we can get Welsh in here. D Welsh, you around? You got a big, your chin up. You got a big boner. In the volume, not your chin. You're gonna have to go borrow some money from Sith Negan in order to get Bullfrog unmuted. (laughs) Just, just saying. I can't, Uh, you know, I can't speak against the word of God, you know, or the Lord, the Lord Emperor. Dude, we should put up. We should make a mix between like the the Emperor's theme from Star Wars and uh, Ozzy's Crazy Train or something like that. Make like a huge like. D- a death punk mix or something for like them. when they take two different songs and put them together and they sound cool like that sort of thing. Yeah, somebody sh- somebody recently showed me Earth, Wind, and Fire's um, September with uh, Crazy Train, and I thought it was hilarious. That's pretty crazy. I've yeah. seen some pretty good ones. Like sometimes they don't work out, but sometimes they're like really good. Yes. Well, I guess D Welsh's mic is fucked. Damn it, uh, D Welsh. Yeah, I'm right here. Oh my God! Hi. What up, Red oh, Comet man? What? Uh, so D Well, so you, you what? You wanted to talk shit to Bullfrog? Yeah, me and Red Comet and Ryan the Hill and AJ Adams all want to fucking talk shit. Wow. So, uh, well, he left. I mean, I will say that he did take off, but uh, you know, because oh, I, I muted him, I think he got mad. He probably got upset. All right, all right. Give us one good yeah. gem. Give us give us one good gem that you would have said to Bullfrog. Uh, it's probably not even worth the fucking time at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know: Does he? Does Nothing. Bullfrog own dentures? Dentures? Yep. No, I bet he doesn't. He probably does. I bet he doesn't. We only Can because I-, I bet he brushes his teeth like. Three times a day, like mommy had him brushing his teeth three times a day. He's like, mommy told me, like, like I he bet she's got he that. He can't brush his teeth. He has no teeth. <laughs> yeah, uh, he didn't brush his. That's the problem is he didn't brush his teeth. You think so? That's I mean, why, that's why at forty two years old he has no teeth. Wait, he has. He really doesn't have teeth. Are you serious? He has no yeah, teeth. He doesn't have teeth. What? Yeah. All these oh, time, and I never guy. know. How did I never notice that all these years? Poor guy. Yeah, look when he's mouth breathing. Next time he's on camera, look at him when he's mouth breathing. You can't see. You, he's got he's got meat grill. Oh my oh, god! Oh, only bumpers. Poor guy. Not really. He brings it on himself. Yeah, he deserves it. I mean, yeah. And he's probably blowing we, up. He's already blowing up my DMs at this point. It's Would probably better to- for his blowjobs, you know, when he's sucking. Yeah, dude, Scott. <laughs> so, are we considering that Bullfrog may, in fact, be the new Tommy NC? Oh, Tommy's got way more talent. Yeah. No, people said that a year ago, but uh, they're both dead. Oh wow. Yeah, they're both. Uh, but there, there's nobody like Bullfrog. He's yeah, uh, Tommy is dead as can be. 
Well, so but, who, so who, so who put the shovel to dirt then on him? I don't know, man. I mean, God did it. I think. Oh wow! For Bullfrog, God did it to him. I mean, he's. The Rock says he's gonna take a golden shovel, dig <laughs> the dirt, dig the dirt, dig the dirt, <laughs> and then roll your fat that, ass into the hole. No, he's uh he's a sad person. Um, but yeah, man, uh, I'm gonna go uh see what's up with the uh with the fucking rumors here, and I'm gonna go upstairs and see if make sure everybody's in bed because uh I don't know. I think Leah passed out, and I swear to God, I hear somebody walking around, and I swear to God, if it's a kid, they're in trouble. Are they back in school. Oh yeah, they're all back in school, so they better. It's like good, I, good. I, it could be the dog or the cat, or it could be, be the, in bed by now. Well, it could be the cat. That's the thing. The cat goes flipping out all over the house, so it could be the cat. Dude, the cat sucks because like I'll be in our bedroom and cats like the cat's getting spayed soon or whatever you call it, but it, the cat's like getting in heat and going crazy in Gavin's room, and it's like I'm hearing like bang bang boom, and I'm like, dude, so what the fuck? Someone come in the house? And no, it's the cat. So every night I'm like, oh, what, the, God, what the fuck? It's like three in the morning and I hear boom, boom. But I'm like, what the fuck's that? And it was the cat. So maybe the cat's just looking for those um, lovely jubblies. The just cat keep will. your cat away from Bullfrog. Yeah, he'll put it in it. Well, he would probably, yeah, yeah he would do it. He would do it. <laughs> this cat has all but done it to me. This cat like. Oh, yeah, they get nasty. Dude, this cat like puts its ass up in the air and backs up into me. Like, come on, you want them? Is it a female cat? Yeah. yeah. Oh, then it sticks the puss in your face. Yeah, I'm like, what do you, what the fuck? And apparently she likes me or something, Leah said. I don't know. You're her type of guy. Yeah. She was like, I, your, your dick smells like a cat's dick, so I like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least she doesn't say it's the size of a cat's dick. Yeah, well, maybe that's the problem. I don't know. It's, <laughs> a, it's pretty small and it's not growing, you know? It's like. What is happening right now? Honesty. Oh, no. Honesty is happening right now. That's what's happening. <laughs> No, when you like, if I'm limp and it's cold, like you'd be like, "Oh, it's what you got? Two inches?" What an extra belly button. Yeah, basically. <laughs> now there was one guy I saw in the locker room. I always tell this, and like he was talking to me, and I didn't realize he was naked, and I was like, "Ooh!" And I remember I saw him, and I was like, "Whoa, where's your dick? Like, was it in there? Like, what the fuck?" And I was like, oh, "Wow." I yeah, I felt way better. Dude, I was dude, like, "Oh, this is awesome! Dude, I got tomorrow. six inches." Yes, D Wells. Tomorrow. Tomorrow's gonna be fire, dude. Because of dynamite, or because of, or, or because like you're gonna blow up a, like a fucking something. What What do you mean? No, dynamite's me. Dynamite's me. Fucking fire tomorrow night. Oh yeah, I'm pumped. I'm pumped for dynamite. I I, I hope to see everybody. I heard there oh, were some bullsy good. pictures out there with him on Discord oh. with his Harry Bush. Ooh, are you what for real? Uh, Jeez, I heard I heard in guard yeah. guts. Yeah. What the he, fuck? He posted a. Picture of his hairy bush on Gargutz's <laughs> Discord one day. Was it like something out of like Clerks Two with Homeboy yeah. like out? Jesus, oh God. listen if yeah. it, if it, yeah. Jesus Christ, yeah. listen if it means he's gonna come back and start donating again, he can post as many bushes as he wants in my Discord. Oh, he might enjoy that. Man. He likes. I think yeah. he would like that. He like like carve into his pubes like JCS. Or like, there you go. Or, or even fuck. You could write fuck Joe. I don't even care. Write fuck Joe in your pubes and put. Yeah, go whatever. You're old enough. Feel free. Do and you're an artist. You know, you're like a chia pet. Transition. What do you, do you Walsh? I was gonna say, and then Friday we got Lesnar and Undertaker at Madison Square Garden. Wait, Undertaker's gonna be? What's he there to promote this fucking? Escape the Undertaker yes. Mansion? Oh no! Like this yes. is too much. Well, he's, and by the way. No, he's there to promote uh, the Saudi show. Oh, he's going. Wait a minute. He's going to wrestle he's at the Saudi wrestling. show. That's what that's what reports are saying. Yeah. Oh WWE my god. Him. Yeah. What? There's no way. There's just no. There's no way he's going to wrestle. I just. Yeah, I, I, he'll do a spot. He'll do like one spot. Vince I mean, McMahon, uh, the, the, the Vince McMahon's on the phone with the prince, and he's like, "This is the great time. I can't wait to my family see the Undertaker." And Vince is like, "Oh well, well the Undertaker's retired. Uh, he, he actually retired a little while back." Huckabuck, what? Like, and then like Vince is like, "Oh, he's and he's like, I'll give you twenty more million if if the Undertaker was there. Anything but the Undertaker got to be there." And Vince I is like, "Oh my god, I'm having that combo." That is <laughs> like, such easy. That's such easy money for WWE because they really don't have to stick to a storyline. Because I don't think over there they they pay too much to, to attention to the to the storylines. 
so they could just throw matches together and put them out there and it, there you go yeah yeah and and i also mind you that again the fact that they're making probably i mean again i don't know how much because i think it was a 10-year deal and they're making like probably eight figures each time they're going over there so again it's still hair off their end if they like they got offered more money just to have a number of other different uh stars come about <laughs> like some older stars you yeah. gotta try to uh, escape my mansion you'll never escape the undertaker's mansion did you see that earlier uh were you here for that extreme shaft i did not see that no. oh my god he doesn't know no i he didn't see either shaft, oh my shaft. god go to your go to youtube search uh -huh. that Oh my God, dude! The is under it horrible? No, he's doing. They're doing something called. Oh, I gotta find it. Where is it? Did someone DM it to me? Yeah, somebody DM'd it. It's basically basically what it is is that it, they're the storyline is is that Undertaker has this mansion and New Day have to escape the mansion. Like it's some Nickelodeon. <laughs> it's the Undertaker so. escaped what? the mansion. Oh my God! It, honestly, it, God, I can. It's I New Day. Yes. Yeah, New Day? I can oh, here it is. I found it. I found it right now. I found it. Look at this. I can make so many memes about this right now. This is way too fucking hilarious. Like, make this actually make this a video game. I would play that. I think make it an eight big graphic video game, dude. Escape the Undertaker's Mansion, dude. An interactive WWE <laughs> video horror movie, a uh, horror movie called Escape Under the Undertaker. Oh no, it's just called Escape the Undertaker, featuring the Undertaker. The New Day is that coming to dirty. Netflix. In the movie, Taker has set a trap for the New Day at the mansion, which is an extreme haunted house. Full of supernatural challenges. <laughs> it sounds dirty. <laughs> it, it's House on Haunted Hill with The Undertaker. <laughs> Undertaker is a married man. I can't believe it. Dude, and I'm trying to think, like, a video game would work. You know, like, you do a video game, a drinking game. Um, and, and, oh, drinking game? Yeah, like, drink if the new, which, like, the new day is going to die, and you get to drink, depending on which so number it dies. So... So which black guy dies first? Right. Well, you know, just for the fun of it, Dolph Ziggler's there too. So that way... One, okay, so he'll be the first one to die. Okay. Right, like the white guy dies first. That's hilarious. And then, like, Big E is the only one to survive. That's that's what you could do that. So it's going to be like... Under dies first? <laughs> it's so, going to be like Undertaker versus AJ Styles. It's yeah. Be something like that. Where they but no, it's weird. It. It's going to be more like he's the host of, like, good luck in this room of haunted misery and like they have to solve oh, a s solve a book puzzle before the ceiling closes in on them you know how so, much you want to how much you want to bet glenn jacobs is in this film well oh that'd be funny but how much you want to bet that something like this happened in 1890 anyway to a bunch of black guys it'd just be a normal day for certain people unfortunately and that's oh that. Congratulations on picking my cotton. <laughs> oh God! Yeah, this horrible. is this is not going to come off very well to the people. That is horrible. This dude. seems so racist. And they, they got the Raiders of the Lost Ark thing with the urn. <laughs> oh my God. How much you want to bet this is going to be like a version of Django Unchained, the rated E version? Welcome to a New Day, Chained. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, or or it's like this. Or, are they going to come up with a video game like Dead Till Day Till Before Dawn or Dead Till Daylight or Jason or whatever? It'll be called like Escape Taker, the video game, and it's just one of those games where you got to survive the Undertaker. Why not do that? That can mean a whole lot of things, Joe. They Basically. could do that. Yeah, I can totally see that. Like a game like that. Yeah, yeah, I can totally see that. That would be the and way you, to go. You could put well WWE could put all their freaks in there. You know, you could have. <laughs> The Undertaker, you could have Kane, you could have the Boogeyman. The Boogie, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You could go Extra Lubis. Papa Shango, what about him? He could be in it. Yeah. You know, and he, an with the marijuana with, in his hand. Well, there's nothing, nothing wrong with a little marijuana. No, give me that Mary Jane. Pour that Mary Jane down my shirt. All right. I'm going to bail. I've been on for a long time, and I'm going to go check on, see what those noises are. Uh, otherwise, I probably would stay on and play some video games, but I want to go see. Or maybe I will stay on. You know what? I am going to stay on, but I'm going to take a break for a minute. Go check on your cat. Yeah, go check on the kids. Um, Make I'm sure more. the cat didn't get pregnant. Real quick, real quick before, real quick before we get off, um, yeah, with yeah. Dynamite tomorrow, what um, what do you want to expect? Just, just out of curiosity for everybody, just to get a feel, what are we looking forward towards on Dynamite other than just appearances and people doing promos? Um, 
I, I'm looking forward to the Moxley match. I want them to build. Yeah, I, I but I also hope that they start the show and they build something for the end of the night that's fun, or that we see some people compete. You know, and it's not just all promos like you said. Like I'm hoping somebody has a match, somebody teams up. You know, what'd be really fun is Darby. Darby, CM Punk, and Daniel Bryan all teaming up against three other guys. That'd be cool at the end of the night. Elite. See, yeah. Real no, quick see, before you run off, I uh, this CM Punk thing and him coming to AEW. I like it. I think it's great. I like CM Punk, but my problem with it and what sold me on CM Punk before, yeah, was the fact that he was fighting against the man. You know what I'm saying? He was, and I, and he doesn't have that now in AEW. No, he gets along with. Tony Khan, you know, you don't have that storyline. I don't know how no, long no, he no, can... no. He, 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 he will do that eventually with Don Collis. <clears throat> right. Yeah, but who's Don Collis is just, you know, the manager for um, Kenny Omega, right? I mean, what else does he do? Well, remember, he also runs a little bit or has a stake in TNA. He can also do other little things in that. I mean, everything is interwoven at this point, so really there's nothing really off limits anything can happen which is the reason why we watch dynamite and then the other thing is is that now that the women are really coming to the forefront it also makes me i mean again the matches qualities compared to the men i mean it's night and day depending on how you look at it from a perspective but ruby and thunder rosa would look forward to um having more japanese talent come in and out to maybe interact with some of the the, the new guys that just came in yeah, I think that there's a lot of different things that can be done now. And who knows? The thing about it is I'm not worried. CM Punk can turn heel at any time and be awesome. CM Punk can just keep it super real at any time and be awesome as a face. So I'm not even worried. I, I think we're going to see all kinds of different stuff. And the good news is is you, is he's that, you know what I mean, flexible that he can do all that. So right. I, it'll be good, I think, no matter what, probably. But, um, yeah. yeah and, and also we got Daniel Bryan added to the mix. Yeah. That was huge. That was, okay, I think, I, I think, idea. what's that? That was huge. What's that? What's your uh, idea to CM cut, Punk, cut up Bullfrog? CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, and Darby Allen versus Cole and the Young Bucks for the end of the night. Bring it on. I'm game. All right, man. I'm out of here. I'm going to go investigate my kids. Thank you guys for hanging out. I had fun, hey. man. We'll do it again. Take care, Joe. Take care, Take man. Take care, guys. Thanks, Chef. See you guys. Thanks to Rastafa, Tom, D. Welsh. And AJ Adams didn't get a word in, and uh, Tom and everybody else earlier too. I had uh, fuck who was here earlier. Uh, Woodcock was here, and there was somebody else who was here early on. Fuck, I don't remember who it was. He was good Thanks. though. All right, well I'm out of here. Uh, much appreciated, man. Thank you all for hanging out. Hit that, hit that like button. Maybe we can get up to 250 likes. I don't know. Maybe the zebras will get it. Um, I had fun tonight, man. I actually was going to stay on and just play video games for a little bit and chill out and play video games tonight. But because um, I've just got so much shit going on, I'm going to take off now since I've been on here for a couple hours. I planned on be video games for like two hours, and instead all this news came out, so I wanted to talk Kevin Owens, wanted to talk Matrix, and we did that for three hours. So I think that's cool. I think I'm going to try to get some earlier sleep tonight to be better and be more alive this week. Tomorrow night's Dynamite. Hopefully if I get to bed in the next couple hours... I'll be up earlier tomorrow to do a midday stream, do some more news videos, get some Patreon stuff up uh, for the patrons. Thank you guys for signing up on Patreon, man. And again, shout out to the $25 producers and above for going specially above and beyond. Uh, you guys obviously are awesome and you're beasts and you're keeping the shit alive. Oh, there's the Joker. There's the Joker.
Joker versus Kevin Owens. It's coming to movie theaters next week. Everybody is excited about it. My wife really enjoyed the part in the trailer where Joker ate his balls. That was fun. And shout out to the top dog, ladies and gentlemen, Soundwave92 with the $29. Man, that was the largest uh, dono of the stream despite the 20s and the 10s and stuff that were rolling in. That was the largest one. Uh, shout out to this. What a great movie this is going to be. Uh, Heath Ledger back, you know, going up against Kevin Steen, Kevin Owens. What a fire movie it's going to be. I think it's going to be entertaining. I, I heard that Kevin Owens gained 30 pounds just to be in the movie so he could sit on the Joker in one of the uh, ending scenes. So that will be a lot of fun. No, I guess that's a spoiler, but, hey, you know, they happen. Shout out to everybody in the chat. Trey, E-Man, and Ed's View. Keep it hard, brother. Why so sexual? Um, Rostoff, I love you, brother. Thank you. And Sith Negan, my lord, thank you, sir. John Moxley's homecoming tomorrow night, Cincinnati, Ohio, which is where you want to be if you want to, if you want to get stuff put in your arm that doesn't come from the government. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, what's up, everybody? What's up, Paul? Three. Sorry, I didn't get you on, Paul. What's up to everybody else? Sweet. I'm out. Good night. Goodbye. Go check me out on Twitter. I'm gonna tweet. I'm gonna tweet my Twitter. Hey Joe, it's gonna be a Febreze. people die oh very clever wharf eat any good books like what? What? what must i do to convince you people die oh very clever wharf eat any good books lately <laughs>